Hello everyone and welcome back to What A Barb A Pollen Podcast. I'm Ops and I'm joined by an injured lecky, a soul tired beans <laughs> and Vetch, you might be the sprightliest one amongst us I think. Oh god that's saying something because I'm pretty world weary. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to What a Cynical Bunch of Clowns. Oh. We're here to bring you part three of our book reread of Romancing Mr. Bridgerton. But you'll be listening to this hopefully sometime in April. We're speaking to you from March. She's a bit a long month, you know? <laughs> God, you have for so long. We're not even at the end of it yet. Guys, how are we doing before we begin our little reread? As you can tell, we're new- <laughs> we feel like we're not doing great. You know, No. <laughs> The wheels are coming off the carriage. (laughs) Well, what can you do, eh? I mean, I'm fine. I just had a white chocolate magnum, which is not a condom for the Americans. It's a chocolate... Is that what it is? ...ice cream bar on a stick. Yeah, magnum condoms, yeah. But I know what magnums are. I think they sell them here at some shops, like if you go to Whole Foods or something. Well, Beans, how are you? I don't know. I'm just tired. I'm like in the process of looking for a new apartment. So, and then I had a terrible exchange with my ex and I'm tired, (laughs) but my hair looks great. Your hair does look great. You know what? Your head does look great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I think we said in a recent episode that she's gone full on redhead. Mm. She's looking fabulous. Yeah. You know what? It's the chaos of Aries season. You're in for the ride. You might as well be redhead while you do it. Speaking of... Speaking of trash men. Wow, yeah. I listened to this section of the book on my long run this morning, and I really Mm -hmm. came around to Colin. Oh, about <laughs> time. <laughs> Episode 38 or whatever. Just in time for a trailer. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Isn't this one where like, he manhandles her constantly as well? Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's not so great. Not but, endorsed by our podcast, I tell you now. No, we don't like the anger. We don't like... And nor does Penn. But yeah, when he when he's like talking about how he feels on like, coming to terms with his feelings, I was like, aw... Oh. He's kind of cute. Yeah, like you see where he's coming from, don't you? Yeah. You see where he's coming from. Yeah. I mean, I'm glad that in we're nearly approaching our 40th episode. Who knows by the time this is released? I'm glad you finally, finally made it across the line, <laughs> Veg. <laughs> Nine months in. <laughs> we interrupt this carriage ride to bring you. It's the Double Wicked Crumb. <laughs> no, it- you have to specify, babe. You have to specify which sex plot we're talking about. That's the double is implied. It's the second one. Oh, God. And we thought double to doom <laughs> was a horror. We will get to the sex plot of it all. What an opening. Double to doom, double sex plot. Obviously, we recorded the most of this episode weeks ago. We're just interrupting this to reflect on the week we've had. <laughs> An interesting yeah. week in the fandom, I would say. Yeah. For a start, I cannot believe that the trailer was released like a week ago. Yeah. I feel like that was a very, very long time ago. Yeah. Crazy. It's been a journey. Every week feels like another year. We're crawling toward that release date <laughs> on our hands and knees. <laughs> you know what? Like, we're not even crawling to the release date. We're just trying to get to Monday so the Australians can see episode one. Like, <laughs> That's true. Yeah. So everyone... We know it's been a funny old week. We're not going to, you know, get into too much detail, but just thought I'd give a little recap as we're here. Yeah. First of all, Lecky, again, this feels like a millennia ago on Monday, yes. I think. Fuck's sake, a hundred billion stills. <laughs> the Bridgerton hot air balloon <laughs> went by. <laughs> yeah, dropping all these fucking stills. I'm not sure the final number because it was 68 and then more kept appearing. I've heard 88. I think there may be yeah. more than that. So it does look like... Surprise, surprise. It was an accidental leak. Can you believe it? What a shock. I think these came from Netflix's Media Center, which Mm -hmm. is where they will upload promotional material for journalists to basically use in articles. Mm -hmm. And I think somebody with access with a login to Netflix Media Center went, oh, 88 stills that I can release into the Bridgerton fandom and did so. So Lecky, say, for example, you were writing an article about Hannah Dodd and Francesca. You'd Mm -hmm. go onto the center and you'd be like, I need some images of Hannah Dodd as Francesca mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. and that's why there were so many different and they obviously they all got leaked and it was like a couple of days after the trailer yeah. we were broken by this point yeah <laughs> so guys yeah. what's gonna happen is obviously we're in the middle of our reread mm-hmm. happy carriage day it is carriage day as I speak to you like it's nearly two in the morning mm-hmm. we're gonna record an episode this week where we're gonna talk about the stills we're gonna talk about interviews we're just gonna have like a good old catch up there's like a lot of story beats a lot of thoughts that we've got mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and so that episode is gonna come to you at some point in the future we've still got a month yeah. to go guys you know we're pacing yeah. ourselves here yeah. <laughs> a sentence yeah. we've never said before like we we need to pace ourselves <laughs> so we are gonna we are gonna talk about the stills i think 
when we actually looked at the stills, mm -hmm. it, there was tons, but mm -hmm. they all kind of tied into what we discussed for the trailer, I think. A lot of them anyway. Yeah, and funnily, Beans' prediction of Fran being at the piano when they come looking for her was mm -hmm. right. Um, and then we saw what looks like Colin watching Penelope leave in a higher attack from the, the Queen's Ball. Very exciting. Well, we'll get to that. There was a lot of stills from scenes that we already have, but there were a couple of new plot points, so I'm calling them Franadani. Oh, yeah, yeah, Franadani. That is Francesca and Lord Samadani, which we will get into the Francesca of it because there was Francesca with Penelope as well, two wallflowers yep. together. We had little Gregory with... With the arrow. Yeah, I think it might be like a gift that Colin brings back from his travels. Which leads me on to, uh, there's a photo of Colin with lots of like presents and bits mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. pieces yep. on a table. He's looking a bit grumpy, actually. Do you think that's mm -hmm. him bringing souvenirs home? Yeah, yeah, I think that's what that is. So let's fucking hope there's a, there's a present there for... A necklace. For all the necklace. <laughs> Hello, necklace readers. <laughs> <laughs> Stay strong out there. We've got the Bridget and Card game. I'm excited about that. Mm -hmm. The balloon. The bloody balloon. Yes. Mm -hmm. Colin yunking the balloon. That's probably the best shot of all the stills is mm -hmm. Colin mm -hmm. pulling down the balloon. Amazing. And there was an article, actually, which was really interesting. Again, we'll get into it, where they were breaking down a lot of the locations. Mm -hmm. And in that, they mentioned that during that event, which we're, we're going to call it the Innovations Fair. A hero moment. He has a hero moment, which kind of ties yes. into what we were saying about... Yes, exciting. Just before we move on from the stills, because we will discuss them way more in the next few weeks, is there mm -hmm. any that really particularly stuck with you. I know that you're a big fan of the Osterly Colin from the Full Moon Ball. Yes, he looks like a Disney prince there. <laughs> Lovely. But you were just mentioning the red ball. Do we have a little bit of an update on that one? Yes. Yeah, so that one, it, to me, it looks like him watching her leave in a hired hack. I think that's the prelude to the carriage scene. Yeah. And we speculated that in our trailer episode that that would be the ball before the carriage scene. And from the intensity on his face, I think that's what it is. And if you line up where he is, because that is filmed on location at Hampton Court Palace, yeah. mm -hmm. which is also kind of what it's standing in. It's a royal ball, as we thought. Yeah. He is standing in the courtyard looking out where, uh, across like the driveway. That, the ca mm -hmm. I don't know what the castle word for a driveway is, but basically <laughs> he's looking exactly out. Yep. If you remember from the trailer where the carriage goes into to Hampton Court Palace, there's kind of like a tunnel. He's yeah. looking through that from the opposite direction. That is exciting. The other thing that we learned from the stills, Lek, is the Innovations Ball, which we oh, yeah. also mm -hmm. referred to as the Archer's Ball. <laughs> yes, <laughs> for lack of a better term. The one where Penelope is dancing with Debling, but the light sort of falls on her and we have some really tormented looks from Colin. That's mm -hmm. actually from episode three. Yeah. I'll just put it into your head. So Innovations Fair, he saves the day, hero Colin should be happy. I bet you any money he sees that hand on Pen's hips. Oh yeah, yeah. And even though he's the hero, he goes into such a grumpy mood and he goes to the mm -hmm. innovations ball that night and mm -hmm. he's in a mood about it. And the other still I just want to touch on before we move on is of him in the study. I absolutely love it. <gasps> yes. It's from episode four. Oh yes, that's a good one. Yeah. He's mm -hmm. wearing, if you look at him, he's wearing the same outfit. He's standing in the same room yes. as the hand cut scene. And he's mm -hmm. like feeling his healed hand. And it's like he's reaching the ghost of his injury and the ghost of Pen touching him. And mm -hmm. you can see he's so, so deeply lost in thought. And it's one of the moments of real contemplation and realisation. And I yeah. love that still. Yes, that's a good one. It's one of my favourites as well. This week, like you, we've also had tons of new interviews. Again, we're going to discuss this more. And um, we've heard about a queer love story that's going to be in season three, which I know we're so, so excited for. We've mm -hmm. heard that Snow on the Beach is going to be a song, <laughs> such a random Taylor Swift song. There's going to be <laughs> yeah. a waltz to that. Weirdly, it's been on my playlist for a while because Veg suggested it ages ago. I don't know that we <sighs> thought it would actually, actually be on the playlist. I am mourning You Belong With Me. That would have been the perfect pollen song. Yeah, it's kind of a done deal that's gone, isn't it? I'm still mourning that. I'm still processing that. I'm processing that more than the dark sex plot, I think. Oh, well, we, you know, we all mourn our losses, don't we? I mean, I think it's thrown us all completely off because the mm -hmm. deep cut, that's a deep cut even for a Taylor Swift song. Yeah, it's weird. It's a weird choice, isn't it? Because I feel like it's not as recognizable as many of the other songs on that yeah. album. And in, in fact, I'd say the majority. Um, So yeah, I do like the song. It's just an interesting choice. It really throws the rest of the soundtrack up in the air though, doesn't it? Um, we've also heard about some new locations and yes. costuming, so many interesting details mm -hmm. about costuming. But one mm -hmm. I really was interested about, again, we're going to come on to this, but I wanted to touch on this now, was the quote about Violet and Colin. So interesting, where I think it was Ruth Gemmell who said, this year she's a little bit removed, just gives little subtle hints to Colin, yes, pushing yes. him in the right direction, but never tells him exactly what he should do. Mm -hmm. Even though, Lecky, 
She really does know everything that's going on. I love this because that means she knows about pollen. But also, are you taking the right angle? <laughs> As Veg said, <laughs> subtlety is not the best approach with Colin. Yeah. Oh, Lord. You know what? Beans called it, though, because in our trailer, she was like, Violet, that is bullshit from advice that you gave him. She did say that, yeah. And it is bullshit advice because yeah. she normally would be so emphatic. Especially if she knows. So we'll get into that later, but I just... I can't Mm -hmm. believe that Violet knows. I wonder how long she's known. I wonder if she's always known it's on both sides or if she's always just thought it was pen, but... Mm -hmm. Ah. (laughs) But Lecky, I've gathered you here today (laughs) for another reason. Yeah. To talk about the sex plotline crisis of 2024. Yes, listeners, we have to differentiate because if you've been in this fandom a while, you will also remember the dark sex plotline crisis of 2022, 2023, time zone dependent because it was New Year's Eve, New Year's Day when it befell us. (laughs) Lecky, another year, another sex plotline drama. Yeah. We're on chaos, we're on crisis. Uh So do you want to give us a little background? Do I? (laughs) Have to say, have to say, have to say, spoilers ahead, possible spoilers, rumours of spoilers ahead. If you don't want to hear any spoilers, please skip along a few minutes and we won't be talking about it anymore. Yes. Okay, press have been getting screenings, Screeners. okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then inevitably, this is what's going to happen for the next month, is we're going to hear bits of rumours, bits of hearsay, and no one's Mm -hmm. going to really have a clue what's going on. So there was an article from The Sun, definitely not the most reputable news outlet in the world, Mm -hmm. Yeah. but they alluded to Colin having a it's not really storyline, it's a scene mm-hmm. where he is basically involved in a threesome or some sort of entanglement with two women in a brothel. I don't think it was, was it said? Yeah, it was a, a brothel in the article. Right, I think so. And then he watches. And he watches. He observes. He observes, he has a great time. This did not go down too well in the fandom, I have to say. Bear in mind, yeah. this is a fandom who's often thought that Colin was a little green blade of grass. Um <laughs> <laughs> and so, and then all that happened is more and more mm-hmm. rumours piled on from bits of information. We're in yeah. a state of chaos. No one right. really knows what's happening. There's even rumours of another scene. Yes. So there's a lot going on. Lucky, we've been processing this for a few days. Right. I think had mm-hmm. we recorded this yesterday, we'd have been in a different stage of processing it. But I feel like we've yeah. had a bit of time to collect our thoughts. Yeah, I've memed. Um, I've come through the tunnel. The tunnel process is the shock, right? We, yeah. we go into shock. We go into yeah. sort of a dark place. And then mm-hmm. when we're in that dark place, the pollen fandom tries to sort of... I think we're great at gallows humour. Yeah, that's my type of humour. We walk up to the gallows, whack a meme together, and that helps us emotionally process. How are mm-hmm. you feeling, Lucky? Today, I'm fine. <laughs> it's like we have to have like daily check-ins on this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I understand what they're going for here. I've, okay, what's we've that? heard that the <laughs> the sex scenes aren't throwaway. So I feel like they're trying to show us with Colin's character with these scenes, maybe that he's trying to live up to a persona that isn't really him, mm-hmm. trying to be like his brothers when he comes home. Mm-hmm. Fitting with society. The bloody Lord Squad. Lucky, we have cheered on that Lord Squad for months <laughs> and months and months. And look at <laughs> Blame them. Blame the Lord Squad listeners. They're a bad influence. Lord Wilding was laughing at Francesca the other day and now look what's happened. But don't blame Lord Fife because, you know, he's just an observer but the rest of them. Oh Lord. Lord Samadani <laughs> getting in the way of my prawn <laughs> is a difficult time. And they're also trying to show that he is having trouble. <laughs> oh, finish that sentence because I've seen some things this week like <laughs> Well, he's definitely having some trouble at some point. And I also feel like they're using it for the pollen love story to show that later on that mm. he is not able to have these kind of intimate moments with other people without the emotional connection that he's now formed with Penelope because she is his one and only. Because like in the book, he kisses her and it's basically over. So I feel like this is kind of how they're adapting that into the show. Okay, so jumping ahead to our next reread episode, spoilers for the the book that's been out for 20 years. (laughs) During the engagement like scene when they're sleeping together he says he'd been with women before but he'd only just realized that he had never made love until he'd laid penelope onto his bed and begun their intimate dance with a single kiss upon her lips this was like nothing he'd ever felt before this was love and he was going to hold on to it with both hands i mean i'm sure he does hold on to it with both hands we all know he uh holds on to other things with both hands he likes to get handsy yeah so yeah okay after processing a lot i think we've kind of got our heads around why they're doing it and and i do have a few quotes from jess brownell and and Luke Newton, and we're going to talk about this more with the others when we record this weekend. But Jess Brownell has said that Luke's character, Colin, has undergone a pretty major persona change that mostly happens off camera. So I feel like because mm, a lot yeah. of that's happened off camera, they need to establish that somehow. To those who are slightly critical of this storyline, we do understand they could have, you know, implied that this took place off screen mm. during 
between his travels or have even showed the European sex montage <laughs> that we've been joking about. I spent two years desperately hoping not to have a European sex montage. I'm like, where is my montage? <laughs> yeah, but this this is the way they chose to include these moments and basically uh, allude to this part of his character and yeah. you know you kind of can't judge it until you see it to elaborate though jess has said that all of a sudden he's back with this swagger and confidence but she said that luke really nailed it and understood how to convey that with depth and i think that's what we trust ultimately we trust mm-hmm. in nick and newts to really tell yes. the story well yeah but what was interesting about what jess said is she said Obviously, if you're denying a certain part of who you really are and coming back Mm -hmm. with a whole new persona, there's still parts of you that are under the surface. Mm -hmm. And Luke said he's still fighting some demons, but he comes back with a new outlook. This is his rebellious side. He doesn't want to follow the rules. And then I think back to what Luke said quite a few weeks ago, I think, where he said that ultimately the story of season three for Colin is him coming back to who he actually is. So I think where this comes into it in terms of why this is being told through a sexual medium for Colin. Jess said, story-wise, we felt it was important to see Penelope stepping into her power and to see Colin stepping into his sensitivity. They have parallel mm-hmm. opposite tracks, which tries into which ties into what they've said about as Penn gains her confidence, he loses his. Yes. And so they meet at the same place. And Jess mm-hmm. said that intimacy is a perfect place to express both of these arcs. Mm-hmm. What I will say is I've always found Colin to be a very sensitive character anyway. I think he's grown up with his sisters. He's grown up a bit separate from his brothers. I think he's always had this sort of sensitive side to him which again is sort of if he's coming back with a persona if that's what he's returning to Mm -hmm. yeah so I think we understand the storyline for his character in terms of this isn't the real him and we're gonna see this swaggery confidence break fall yeah which is ultimately why you have the costume change of him coming back looking like a pirate and he ends up later in the season which we've always been thought was so interesting he comes back later in the season very buttoned up gentleman and it's like the return to who he is yeah I think uh, what I struggled with is Two things, really. For a start, we understand that this scene happens in episode two. And yes. again, this is all rumours, so it might not be fucking true. Like, we understand yeah. this happens in episode two, and we also understand that it happens just before he goes to his lessons with Penn. I would say this is probably the one thing that yeah. most of us are having trouble with and are kind of grappling with is mm. that, I mean, I hesitate to criticize the show because I love it so much. But mm. for me, I feel like their romantic journey starts when he offers to help her find a husband in episode one, because by the end of the season, their arc is he becomes the husband. Yeah. So I feel like having him have a dalliance with other women in between then, after they strike that deal, it kind of detracts from the romance in a way. But but I'm really confident in Nick and Newts and their portrayals. Yeah, and if I had the choice, I would have included that scene in episode one and kind of yeah. before they make that bargain because yeah. I feel like that's when the love story begins. I think for me... <laughs> You know, the circle of life, Lucky. Just before we wrap up on this, I think for me, I would have had this expressed through his travels. I always imagined we were going to get like a a montage of him on his travels. Yeah, European sex montage. The European sex montage. And for me, that would have expressed the same thing, but it would have been with women who went in brothels, who had more consent on the continent where the society was different and where the class system was a bit different. Regarding the episode two of it all as well, Mm -hmm. Netflix um, in season one, they cut a scene where Simon has... Anthony gave Sienna to Simon. Right. Right. I think that plays into why they cut it because there's an extra kind of ickiness there about him giving his lover to somebody else, you know? Mm, mm. But I but they wouldn't show the male lead having like a tryst with somebody else before he falls in love with Daphne. Yeah. For Antony, it's a bit different from his character because from the beginning of season one, we see him having a relationship with a mistress. Mm. And by the end of season one, he separates in his mind love and, and sex. He says that he's mm-hmm. not going to marry for love. So when they open in season two, you understand that he's going to prostitutes and having these kind of emotionless connections with mm. women before he falls in love with Kate. So, but for me, in season one, they couldn't show the male lead having sex with another woman in episode one, mm. but our male lead has, has oh. a dalliance with other women in episode two, which is, I mean, it's not my favorite thing. I just have to say, I, I really don't want to criticize this show until I see it. I will just say that mm. I would have put it in episode one, or I would have implied that this is something that happened during his travels. It is what it is. And I get it, because Anthony said in season one, basically, I don't regard you as an adult because you haven't, you know, you haven't had the experience. And it could be told where Colin is 
going through those experiences and not quite understanding why it isn't reaching him fully. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. he needs the emotional connection. Yeah. We will say that from everything else we've heard about the series, that mm-hmm. it is going to be very beautiful. Like, yeah. I, I think in our trailer episode, I mentioned this, it might have been one of our other ones. There was even a bodyguard at the end of the mm. shoot who approached Nick and Newt's just to, like, thank them for telling such a beautiful love story and said he'd never mm. done anything like that before. So I feel like we can trust in the love story. Would I maybe have adapted just these one or two scenes a little differently or maybe have placed them in episode one, if not cut them? Maybe. But I feel like by the end of it, the love story is going to be beautiful and worth it. And I hope everyone else has come out of their whatever little spiral <laughs> this news maybe sent them on. Meme your way through. Yeah. And then on a last note from us, on Monday, the residents of Barrel will get the first look. I think they're the first in the world to get a look mm-hmm. at episode one. We are a spoilery group. <laughs> yes. There is no denying it. So we will probably discuss spoilers in a future yes. episode. What we mm-hmm. will do, though, is we'll always make sure we preface the spoilers so we'll always yeah. give alerts we'll give timestamps so that if you really don't want any spoilers from episode one we won't spoil it for you same with our stories if we share anything on our stories that relates to actual spot because we deal in speculation and theories and filming leaks mm-hmm. obviously the actual content content being released is yeah. a direct spoiler so we will handle it differently yeah if you're watching it have a great time i feel like we're all clinging on to the Australians to be the canaries <laughs> going into the mine of yeah. episode one and to report back yeah. um but Lecky, I think we've rattled on for long enough. Yes. Shall we leave Chopin and Colin and go hang out with their book counterparts? Because it's carriage day, we're off to church, mate. And ducks might be involved. <laughs> Spoiler alert. You're in for a treat. <laughs> Rousy energy, despondent crowd, because today is a momentous occasion in pollen history. When you're listening to this, it will be the 200th anniversary of the carriage scene. Are we ready to get in? Mm -hmm. Our energy is so low that, like, Lecky, I need you to edit in, like, fireworks, like, (laughs) can you add the ba 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 thing? Like, (laughs) yeah. It is the 20th of April, 1824. It's the morning after the Macclesfield Ball and Colin has woken up with only one thing on his mind. Can anybody guess what it is? Biscuits. It is Miss Penelope Featherington. What a surprise. Yeah. Miss Penelope's bosom. (laughs) I mean, indeed. But he realises that he never actually got round to apologising to her last night and he is quite troubled by the thought. And he decides that he wouldn't feel comfortable in his own skin until he spoke the words, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Lucky, this is feeling oddly reminiscent of someone I know. Well, we know that that show Colin likes to make amends for his mistakes here, but Colin also admits that he likes to apologize. It is the gentlemanly thing to do. But I also love this detail about Book Colin just wanting to see Penn because I think coupled with his desire to make things right, as we've seen from the Goodnight Mr. Bridgerton clip, he really does miss her and likely would do anything to see her again at this point. It also is just very much 100% he likes her at this point is what I'm mm-hmm, interpreting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because like, If you don't care about somebody that much and you don't like them like them, you're not really going to question your every move and like, was that okay? Mm. Didn't feel like I was leading her on or whatever. It's just like compelling him to talk to her again because he wants to be on good terms with her. Well, he's down bad. But what's hilarious about the Colin at this point is that he hasn't quite made the connection yet. He's like, well, apologizing is just the gentlemanly thing to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, and you know, I just kind of fancy hanging out with her. Like, what a coincidence. So he makes his mission of his day. I just love hanging out with her, being around her. Yeah. But I don't like her. No. There's nothing yeah. to it. It's just, you know, I just wake up with her on my mind and I spend every second breathing for mm. her existence. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we're at that kind of stage. Yeah. yeah. But you know what? He's having an absolutely magical time of it this fine Tuesday morning. The sun is shining. He's had a great breakfast. And if he just so happens to be off to see Penelope, then I'm sure he has nothing to do with the fact that... Life really didn't get better than this. I honestly feel like this is absolute show Colin in like 207, 208 when he's like, I'm having such a wonderful day. Everything is sunshine and rainbows. I'm just seeing Penn. Oh, what a classic day. <laughs> so, you know, the resonance is there. Yeah. And hilariously, Colin chooses not to analyse why he was so eager to see her, which is just about the most accurate book to screen adaptation there's ever been. <laughs> like, God forbid he ever analyzed his feelings about Penelope, I guess. It would have made for a much quicker end to this podcast, that's for sure. But, you know, we're in hand to do the analyzing for him. So off he goes to see her jumping in his carriage to pop over to her house. But what's this he spots? A short flurry of movement, I see. Penelope, is that you getting into a hide hack? Best check it out. And thus 
begins a carriage chase through the street. Is it a chase if someone doesn't know they're being chased? I keep calling it a carriage chase. Yeah. In his mind, it's like an action thriller. Follow that car. Yeah. It's a I think in Penn's mind, she's just trundling along <laughs> happily. <laughs> Look, we're in his perspective. And there we go, courtesy of our favourite chaotic Bridgerton. Colin immediately realises that Penelope is up to no good, having jumped into a hired hack instead of her family's carriage. And Colin first mm. plans to stop Penelope's hack in its tracks, but he realises that if he does that, he'll never know where Penelope was going. Mm. Yeah, he he couldn't help it, the book says. He had to know where she was going. But just as his right foot left the confines of his carriage, he was struck by the same madness that led him to wander the world. Curiosity. Very cute. (sighs) Curiosity killed the cat, Colin. So, a little show interlude. Do we think that show Colin's curiosity is going to drive him to follow Penn in the same way? And what do you think the setup is going to be for the show? We've discussed it before, but have your opinions changed? So here, it's a bright, shiny Tuesday morning. He's just going about his business when he sees her slip off. But do we think it's going to be different context in the show? So what we've speculated before is that it makes more sense within the world of the show for him to notice her slipping off at a ball and then decides to follow Mm. her because he's paying more and more and more attention to her. She's always got away with it before because she thinks no one's watching her. I Mm. still agree with that. Yeah, I think it makes for more dramatic. Yeah, Lucky, you want a nighttime carriage scene, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And do you think that when he notices her slip away, do you think he'll just be like caught off guard and he's like, where is she going? Or it's almost accidental. He's just like, I'm trying to follow her to speak to her about something. And he just stumbles upon the situation. Or do you think that over the few episodes, if we're saying the carriage could fall within about episode four-ish, mm-hmm. do you think he might have slowly started to suspect, maybe not that she's whistled down, but that she's keeping something from him? Hmm. Yeah, maybe. Or if she's rejecting him and he's like, why are you resisting this so much? I do have a few thoughts. I like your idea that he like has piqued interest in her because we already know he mm-hmm. does, but it's even more He's peaked. on alert. Yeah. Mm. I think if they tied in the scene feeling like he had to apologize to her for something mm. or like they had some kind of argument or whatever, and then he feels yeah. compelled to be like, oh, I must say I'm sorry. Oh, she, I don't want her to be mad at me again. And then he Mm. tries to go and find her and sees her slipping away at a ball or something like that. (gasps) Beans, that's interesting because I think ages ago, and I mean like a really long time ago, we wondered if they were going to have a ball or a a dance or something where Mm. he's acting really chaotically and he sort of shows her up a little bit by acting out at a ball, maybe interrupting a dance or something. And they have a very tense moment at the ball. And what you're doing is building and building and building this ultimately sexual tension. And that's the rise where he then... Like you say, he's like, shit, I need to apologize for, like, shit, I need to, like, we need to talk this out. And that's the energy that he goes into that scene with. Yeah, because there is a lot of energy behind the carriage scene. And it's a lot of sort of anger in the book. And I know that we want to get away from that. So, yeah, it does feel like there'll be a different way to build some of that tension. Yeah. Another way to build tension, and that we've discussed before, is that in episode four, if Penelope maybe breaks things off with Debling, but she still is not letting herself give in to Colin and to her her feelings yeah. for Colin, that might frustrate him enough to yeah. seek her out and see where she's going after this ball if he catches her leaving. He's like, what is it that you're still so mm-hmm. insistent on keeping me at a distance for? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Editor's note, thanks to the new stills that were released this week, we now have more context about the red ball or the queen's ball that takes place in episode four. You might remember that this is where a troubled enchanted pen dances with Lord Debling as a troubled enchanted Colin watches on in anguish. We mentioned in our breaking crumbs that we think the new still of Colin outside the palace is in fact Colin watching Penelope leave the ball in a hired hack. If this is true, then we have not only Penn and Colin, but enchanted Pollen transforming into midnight carriage rendezvous Pollen. How exciting. But back to Book Cullen, who is busy stalking, sorry, I mean following Penelope through the streets of London. No need to pass Baker Street to Colin Sherlock Holmes because we've got a real detective on the case. But the time has come. To choose your own bean venture. Ba-da-da-da. Trying to figure out where Penelope is going, Colin reasons that she must be A, going to buy a secret gift on Oxford Street, a little bit of shopping for the afternoon. Mm. B, going to see him at his bachelor lodgings. How scandalous, Pen. C, going to place a bet on the horses at Ascot, like father, like daughter, I suppose. Or D, going to meet up for a morning rendezvous with her secret lover. <gasps> oh. I feel like if it's chaotic, he would say secret lover, but I also feel like he would be inclined to think that she's going to visit him. So I'm torn between those two. (laughs) Um, Secret lover. You were so close. Mm -hmm. Was I going to see him? 
it's all of these except for C going to place a bet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> At first, he thinks she's going to buy a secret gift for somebody. She thinks she's going shopping. And then as they go like further into the city, he's like, oh, maybe she's going to see me. And then his like mood just... Yeah, once they pass his street. After they go past Bloomsbury. And he's like, what? Where is she going? And then they end up going into the city. And then he gets super jealous. And he's like, she must be going to see a lover. Super dramatic. Interesting. Interesting. Very dramatic. All of these thoughts happen within about three seconds. Yeah. <laughs> Every single scenario he like plays out in extreme depth. Mm-hmm. Can I... Can I just say something? I'm feeling very veg-esque in the point where I'm so done with men. I kind of just want to bonk Colin on the head and be like, Pen, let's be a lesbian for a little bit. That's fine. (laughs) And women are very confusing, complicated creatures. But I also think I'm tired of men. <laughs> now, luckily, Veg has turned Team Colin for this episode, so we balance it up. Yeah, exactly. It was a sunny day today. I think I was just in a good mood. <laughs> <laughs> you feeling benevolent? But the idea that she's going to his house, his brain explodes at the thought. Yeah, he's very pleased by the idea. Mm-hmm. And he even notes that he has a delicious thrill up his spine at the idea of Penelope going to his house. Mm. <laughs> but as Lecky alluded to, the further they get in London, the further east they go, the more horrible horrified he is because she is somewhere she does not belong. He also says that he couldn't imagine that her mother allowed her to associate with people who actually worked for a living is his reasoning for why she might not go see him in Bloomsbury. And that reminds me of the scene in season two where Portia implies that she can't imagine a woman being reduced to running her own business, like Jen, unaware that Penn has her own business and is in fact business partners with the Modiste. And you know what? Penn is traveling on business as we speak, as he's about to discover. Choose your own bean venture. But Colin is still very much trying to come to terms with it. And as he processes the fact that Penelope is in fact headed further east into the dodgiest depths of the city, he is suddenly overtaken by an incredible anger and compares the way he feels to Lecky. A, the burning sensation caused by certain illnesses gentlemen don't discuss in proper company. B, the great fire of London. C, the inferno as described by Dante, or D, the hot coals his Cypriot host walked over during his welcome feast. Okay. Colin is a little bit of an oddball. So (laughs) I could totally see him. He's also very dramatic. Very dramatic, yeah. But also I feel like he would be someone, I'm not going to say this is my answer yet, Mm -hmm. but I feel like he would be someone that thinks that her going somewhere else or whatever would be akin to him having really terrible crabs. So, um... (laughs) No, I thought that sentence was going. (laughs) An itch he can't scratch. (laughs) so many ways amazing so are you saying it's a burning sensation when he pees is that what you're saying uh no because it's i think it's gonna be the great fire of london that is correct Correct. ding 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 but dramatic colin says that the great fire of london is nothing compared to the anger he feels at Penn being off in the east end i mean colin a lot of people died in the great fire of london let's not be too dramatic here now darling (laughs) rest in peace And as he said, Buck Colin Temper pops up to say hi and they finally pull up on Fleet Street and the carriages grind to a halt. She's clearly a Sweeney Todd fan, I'm just now realising. Demon Barbara Fleet Street. The Demon Barbara Fleet Street. (laughs) Well, Fleet Street is like the, it's where all the journalists hang out. So that's where all the print presses were. Did you know, sorry, this is off kilter, but only eight people were recorded to have died in the Great (laughs) Rome. Rest in peace to those eight people. And that is eight people too many. Yeah, sorry to those people, but people were pretty good at escaping. That is no way true. Everyone just jumped in the Thames from what I can tell and they just were fine. No way. It was just property damage. (laughs) Any loss of life is still a loss. Yeah, any loss of life is too much, but... Well, anyway, speaking of Colin's (laughs) drama queen tendencies, as he Mm -hmm. sees Penelope getting out of the hired hack, he thinks about tackling her (laughs) to the ground. Like a a rugby player, like, (laughs) Oh, Jesus Christ. (laughs) Yeah, I find that hilarious. Good God. Oh, dear. And you know what? He's tempted, he's tempted. But he realizes that if he does rugby tackle her or American football tackle her, I don't know what you call it. What do you guys call it? A tackle. A tackle, yeah. Tackle, fine. Then she'll never reveal the true reason as to why she's there. And he needs to know. So he watches as she dips into a little church and says, God's sake, now is not the time to find religion, Penelope. (laughs) So he slips in behind her and watches as she counts the pews, pulls out an envelope and tucks it into the back of one of them. I feel like this could be so cinematic. 
Anyway. <laughs> I mean, we'd hope so. And that's when Colin made his move. <laughs> Little shout out here to the line, stepping out of the shadows, he he strode purposefully towards her. Pollen fans will be all too familiar with the phrase, out of the shadows, which is the episode title of 301. Roll credits. But (laughs) Pen ain't cheering at that because she is very taken aback seeing him there and barely has time to react before he grabs her. Again, but Colin, hands to yourself, please. A refrain we'll be repeating throughout this episode. Mm. She tries to chat her way out the situation by babbling about the church they're in. They're in St. Bride's on Fleet Street. It's a real church. Have you been vegetable? Have I been? No, have you? She, yeah, she got stuck in a piano recital there, remember? No, no, that was Piccadilly. Oh, okay. That was the, that was the church from 206. Okay. Well. When I got stuck in the piano recital for an hour. We'll look up, like, their schedule and see if there's a piano recital at St. Bride's, and you could have that experience there, too. But yes, Penelope babbles that the steeple looks like a wedding cake, which, I mean, it kind of does, it kind of does. And she says that it's a church for Colin because it's a church for writers. How cute is that? Yeah, so she's super nervous, and she points out that the church looks like a wedding cake and I just wonder if this played out in the show whether or not show Penn might believe show Colin thinks she's propositioning him when she brings up the mm. wedding cake when she's just very nervously describing what she's doing there it's interesting that but Colin's mind is straight on he's like it looks like a wedding cake like we're gonna get married is that what you're saying that we're gonna get married is that what you're trying to tell me and she's like <laughs> absolutely fucking not <laughs> but Colin ain't having any of it because he is fuming Colin's attitude in the scene really helps build the tension and I'd love to see something similar play out in the show with Penn kind of being flustered while Colin is really cool and calm and collected. I really love how he finishes her sentences, at least early on in this conversation, where she can't even get his name out. And he's like, that would be Colin. Mm. And with us kind of uncertain of how exactly he's going to react, it'll just be delicious. I also, though, Mm. would really like a scene, too, though, where, because I feel like Penn is always especially nervous around Colin. Like, part of the whole out of the shadows things is I want to see, we all want him to see her in a different light, but I want him to see her being confident in herself in a way that wasn't a catalyst of his help you know yeah so it would be mm-hmm. it would be even more interesting to me if she didn't have the reaction that he was expecting mm. and maybe she is nervous but it's not coming off to him as if she's nervous it's like oh colin hello like mm. what are you doing here <laughs> That's an interesting point because by this point in the show, her secret has already been found out by somebody else. So she might already be anticipating a poor reaction and kind of be resigned to it. But I will say in the carriage scene in the book, she does have a moment of that confidence where she kind of stands up to him. But yeah, it it is interesting to consider that she's already had a confrontation like this with somebody else. Mm -hmm. So that might affect how she reacts. Beans, we'll touch on this in a second because we're going to talk about the differences in how this moment would play out in the show. Yeah. But I wonder if what you're saying would work really well if it was like an Irish made pen moment mm. where and we won't go into this too much because we're gonna circle back to this in a second where when he finds her she's in the middle of her Irish pen persona yeah oh yeah and so what he sees is her being like because we've seen her with the printer she is so focused she's so in control of the situation right <laughs> she doesn't flounder and if he sees that side of her first of all yes please he'll be so down for it yeah but that is the moment that you're getting at where he's like she's not nervous she's in command of the situation yeah. and he it helps him see her in a very different way as the businesswoman it'd also be interesting if she's not able to break character because she doesn't want to give away that she's actually the lady whistle down she can't break because mm-hmm. she can't suddenly come out in her refined accent yeah mm-hmm. if she's going to maintain the relationship so that would be such a cool thing but we will get back to that mm-hmm. in just a minute but lucky why is he so pissed off Colin is especially furious at the fact that she had a secret, not because she Mm. kept a secret, but because she was Penelope. She was supposed to be an open book. He knew her. He'd always known her. And now it seemed he'd never known her. And we've discussed in past episodes, but this might be the point where show Colin realizes he's placed Penelope on a pedestal as well. And I wonder if ultimately he'll realize that he's not only placed on a pedestal, but he's underestimated her Mm -hmm. in a way once he's got past his anger. Because I think this is key to him really seeing her in a different way. Like you were just saying, Beans, that it's a moment where he is forced to see her in a different way. And not only see her as this gossip writer, but see her capability and her power that she's had this whole time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So do you think this notion will upset show Colin? Because I think the slight difference here is but Colin here is so taken aback by the idea that she has secrets because he's like, I never thought she had secrets. During our season two rewatch in particular, we picked up on this quite a few times where it's almost as if Colin knows that Penelope keeps things from him, especially when it comes to Eloise. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
He's like, yeah. I know you two keep secrets. Mm-hmm. That's fine. And he he never really pushes her on it. So do you think it's going to come up so much? Or do you think he is still going to feel this level of blindsidedness? Because in season three, their friendship is going to develop so, so much further. And he's going to almost be like, of course I know her inside out. I'm in love with her. I know her inside out. Mm-hmm. And then this other side is still going to blindside him. I think <laughs> it could be a really interesting moment of tension for the two of them. Because I feel like in a way, Colin is so endearing and open about things. But I feel like Penn will probably think that he's keeping things from her too purely Mm. because of what happened at the end of season two you know like yeah like what are you capable of yeah exactly and so I wonder if there's going to be something like a I hope there isn't but like a revisit to like oh well you know you keep your own secrets as well even better if we do have this scene where he like wants to be a writer but he doesn't tell anybody or anything that would be I think a more healthy argument (laughs) productive argument so to speak because it could be like well look at you you're a hiding like this really big thing that you want to do and you have hobbies too yeah and you're holding yourself back from that as well because of what propriety your self-image whatever you know like Mm. you're doing this as well that's a good point Mm. but you know she manages to win him over and he finds the idea of it being his church as a writer just lovely since (laughs) on the topic of writer colin Mm -hmm. so lovely in fact that he's developed a sudden taste for prayer prayer (laughs) okay let me re-say that prayer (laughs) <laughs> My note was just Dickensian and pen. <laughs> okay. Prayer. I can't do it. Oh. Damn. <laughs> Prayer. <laughs> Prayer. You. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm in a church. I believe I want to pray. I didn't think you were a particularly religious person. I'm not. I intend to pray for you. Jesus. <laughs> Dum dum dum. Mm. Oh dear. Thank you. Once again, those are interpretations of characters rather than accurate representations. <laughs> I tell you, I sound just like the audiobook. <laughs> and I have received compliments from our audience. You have. Have I? Oh no, bean test, bean test, bean test. You haven't. Can someone please tell Ben she's done a good job of audiobook Collins? <laughs> We've not heard audiobook Collins, so <laughs> we can't comment on it. But and then the boy is going to pray so he strides towards where he saw her hide the paper whips it out victoriously Colin's like do you want to tell me what it is and Penn says it's a secret it's a secret also I just want to say I want a visual this is the key moment to use the height difference I maintain Mm -hmm. yes go look at the illustration that Nana Banana did of this scene perfection that's exactly it where he holds it above Mm -hmm. her head Mm -hmm. and she can't get it from him yeah that's how we want to do the height differences. And Colin is taken aback because he doesn't recognise his own fury and thinks that this is something that Penelope specifically brings out in him. And then this is the moment beans that Colin's brain melts because he suddenly panics that she has a secret lover. And he also wonders if she was lying about having never been kissed before. <laughs> mm. Kind of rude, Colin. He's, he goes down so many avenues <laughs> so quickly. Yeah. <laughs> And then he realizes with horror that he is jealous and he tears open the paper. She cries out and flees a scene. He reads it. And what's on the paper beans? What was on what paper? The piece of paper he reads. What do you mean what paper? Are you listening? (laughs) Oh, he finds out that she's all out of whistle down. But what's on the paper? What's on the paper? The latest issue of Lady Whistledown. (laughs) Thank you, Veg. The time has come to choose your own bean venture. ba da 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 After running out of the church, horrified that Colin now knows her secret, Penelope Mm. says that her heart felt A, as if it was going to escape from her chest, B, as if Cressida stomped all over it for the second night in a row, C, as if it wanted to throw up, or D, as if it had never been there at all. Oh, damn. If a heart threw up, would that just not be blood? Oh, I don't know. Would it just not be pumping? If her, yeah. But which is the answer? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, what's the heart doing? Her heart. Okay. I think Penn is an author, so it's got to be something interesting, right? It can't just be like, oh, Cressida stomped on it. As if it had never been there at all. Unfortunately, the correct answer is C, as if it wanted to throw up. Oh, really? I was just about to say that. <laughs> yeah, I thought you were going to go for the throw up option, but you veered away. <laughs> I want it to be a little bit like, you know, yeah. a little bit poetic. Yeah. Because yeah. that would be a very poetic answer, wouldn't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But her heart's thrown up all over the pavement or <laughs> sidewalk, if you're American. Penelope looks around, realizes her hack has gone on without her, and she's like, well, fuck, I'm stranded. Yeah. So she sits back, she sits down on the ground, 
chokes back her sobs and has this heartbreaking moment where she realizes that Colin isn't perfect because she doesn't recognize his anger. And she's like, oh my God, it's so cruel that he would read my words. And then <laughs> oh, she's like, girl, yeah. Calm down. And then she's like, yeah, I mean, I read his private writings, but to be fair, those private writings were open in an empty room in an empty house that he thoroughly believed was empty. <laughs> he was taking a shit, okay? He was relieving himself next door. Which is entirely different to it being in a sealed envelope. You got him with his pants down, literally, okay? <laughs> pants down, journal open. Hers was sealed. <laughs> she looks at the hypocrisy right in the face and uh, turns away from it, bless her. <laughs> yeah. But who appears behind her to tell her to... Get up. <laughs> <laughs> Classic lines. Iconic. God damn. Caveman Colin. <laughs> and Pierce. Don't. I don't know what tone Luke Newton would use for that if he said that. Have you ever heard Colin with like a steeliness in his voice? Don't. Oh, I wonder if it could be like a, like a tempting scandal sort of tone. Mm. Uh, like perhaps we should tempt scandal more often. Don't. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of the energy I could see. And so how else are they going to get home but getting in his carriage? So before we delve into the carriage scene itself, let's just backtrack a little bit. Because, I mean, this is a huge scene. It's a huge turning point. It's something that we suspect might be one of the turning beats of the season where the parts end. Um, there could also be, you know, the blackmail and stuff like that. But this is a key showdown between the two. Mm -hmm. How do you think it's going to go? Not the carriage. We'll get into that in a minute. But in terms of the discovery. In terms of the discovery. Well, we did briefly talk mm -hmm. about that. I think she's going to steal away. and Colin's going to follow her. But I think there has to be, like, a reason why he follows her. You know, it's not just, like... She's hot. A necklace. I need to look at it. Yeah. Well, I mean, sure. But for storytelling reasons, there has to be like, yeah. they had a conversation. He's like worried about her, confused her. Maybe earlier in the episode, she revealed to him that, you know, she is thinking that Debling is the guy for her. And Colin's like, no, that can't be true. <laughs> it turns into a musical. I must love you. <laughs> <laughs> What do you feel about the setting? Because it's so iconically in a church. And you know what? The visuals, I think, Veg, you were saying this, the visuals are very striking, but yeah. the logic within the novel works because that's how she goes about mm. delivery and stuff. Whereas, right. Um, but we do learn in the book that it's not her usual method. This is just sort of the emergency yep, yeah. yep, yep. crumbs, as it were. You know, she sent a coded message to the guy. So it's still within scope, I feel. <laughs> like you've pointed before that, especially if this is a point where there's the bounty mm -mm. Uh. and is putting pressure on everyone. Yeah. Could it be that maybe Jen has been like, I'm backing out of this? Yeah. Or like Penelope is is like, I'm going to protect you, so I'm going to back out of this. And because maybe people are being followed or everything's hype, she's having to find new ways to communicate. And so she does end up in the situation, like she does here, where she's, it's out of the norm for her, where she does go into a church. Okay, adding on to that with Jen, speakity sparkly spicks in my head and in my tits. Um... <laughs> So what if her and Jen start meeting at a church because it would be weird if Penn just like kept going in and out mm -hmm. of the, the, the tailor because you're like, oh, damn, do y'all really have that much money? Like, that's crazy. And so to keep people at bay, they meet up at the church because of said bounty, because that's the safest place for them to be, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's innocuous. Yeah. And then like Colin's like, why is Genevieve's carriage here? <laughs> Lucky, what are you thinking? I have a couple thoughts about this. I wonder if because we recently wrapped up our crumbs episode for block four, but we know that Genevieve was present during some of the last scenes of the shoot with the queen mm -hmm. at one of mm -hmm. the locations where we think the queen was filming. So I'm I'm thinking that maybe Genevieve doesn't pull away from Penelope in that manner, but maybe Penelope would take a risk like this because she wants to protect Jen. So maybe she mm -hmm. arranges this meeting at the church because she wants to go a different route to protect Genevieve, or it could be an urgent situation like Veg touched on. And But I wanted to say there is a potential that he could still catch her in the Irish maid outfit, even if they don't mm -hmm. meet at the printer shop, because she would probably put on that outfit to sneak somewhere where she's not supposed to be going. Yeah, yeah she's still in dodgy part of town. 
this isn't even related to the book, but a tiny little thought. Like, I wonder if Jen could get in trouble mm-hmm. as being like a conspirator, but she refuses to sell Pen out. Because she was seen at Hampton Court Palace. What was Genevieve doing at Hampton Court Palace? Yeah. I'm not saying it was used as a palace. Or even better, what if the queen enlists Genevieve to make a special dress, but in reality, she's mm. trying to get more information from Genevieve because she mm. suspects that Genevieve might know more than she lets on. Mm. Yeah, there might be like a moment where Genevieve realizes she's under scrutiny and so Penelope Mm. has to take some other risk to Mm -hmm. deliver her Mm -hmm. latest issue. A question then to just wrap up to the adaptation. Are you particularly wedded, forgive the phrase, to it being in a church? No. Because it is a striking visual. Yeah, I do quite like it. But is it something that you could let go of? Because if if it's a night scene, would that be more striking for you? Would it just be the heart of the scene that you need to get? I think the heart of the scene is more important than the location. Mm -hmm. While I think it could be, they could make it very beautiful and very pretty, Mm -hmm. I think that just because of the way the story is set up, they have Penelope going straight to the printers. <clears throat> yeah, she doesn't need a middleman. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so I feel like I don't see how they could possibly include the church scene in there. Yeah, why would she be there? I would love it, but I am not upset. I would rather the heart of the yeah. scene be there Yeah, same. than anything. Kind of same, but I would like the church, I think. It's good visual, but I think it would add to his anger if there wasn't a middleman. If she yeah. was still, even, because it's like a stupid thing to do. To yeah, keep yeah. Going going back to printers but it's right. it's something that she'd recklessly do yeah also just a quick question what do you think pre courage scene Colin's very, very, very initial reaction is going to be. Is it going to be anger? Is it going to be shock? Is he going to be able to speak to her? Is he going to be horrified? And is it going to be the same situation where he's like, get in the carriage, we're taking the long way? He's going to break out into song. It's so hard to know because we haven't seen like angry Colin really. Yeah. But he is very angry in the book. In the book. In the book, he remarks that she brings it out in him. Yeah. Well, I don't think we're going to see angry book Colin in the show. I no. think they might kind of school his reaction mm. even as they begin the carriage scene. So you don't really know how he's going to react because that will build the suspense and the tension because we don't know what he's thinking until he starts to speak and they have that conversation. Right. He goes really, really quiet, Mm -hmm. which is almost the opposite of... Because you want the contrast to Eloise Mm -hmm. where she she realised and then held it and then went, splayed everything open and then they had this lashing argument. Mm -hmm. But let's go see how Book Cullen is handling it because we have been well and truly taken to church and now it's time to take the long way home. Guys, you know what's coming? It's carriage scene time. (laughs) Colin hands over the incriminating sheet of paper, revealing that Penelope is in fact the notorious gossip writer herself. The sheet in question? Lady Whistledown's rebuttal that she is Cressida, noting, It would break my heart to see my years of hard work attributed to one such as her. Break my heart, break my heart. Hmm, it's an interesting phrase. Sounds oddly familiar. Yeah, as an aside, I feel like the break my heart language doesn't stand out enough. So I feel like in the show, they're going to have to have something more specific that will mm, tip off Cressida, yeah. you know, on par with like the plant puns that Penelope <laughs> makes mm. as both herself and Lady Whistledown in season two. Because yeah, it has to be a striking phrase. Yeah, it has mm-hmm. to be a very specific phrase that one would note mm-hmm. in conversation if it was reset. Mm-hmm. And Penelope is taken aback by how Colin looks completely unlike himself. She notes that that sort of playful edge to him has completely gone and he has turned to ice. He's been replaced by harsh lines and cold, pure ice. That's kind of what you were saying, like you were like, he will almost go unreadable Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so utterly different and transformed. And it's harder when, if someone like explodes immediately, you're like, okay, I know what we're doing. Yeah. But if someone's unreadable, Mm -hmm. that's far more unnerving. And she panics because she's like, I've been in love with this man for years. I thought I've known him inside out and I don't know who you are and I don't know what your reaction is going to be. Colin says he's trying to decide what he's most angry about there's many options available for him is it putting herself at risk by venturing into the city the thought of her laughing at him for accusing Eloise and running around on that goose chase Mm -hmm. not taking the easy escape by letting Cressida take credit for Whistledown the list is pretty long but so is the journey home so we've got time to ponder it Colin is especially upset that Penelope couldn't just let Whistledown die and let Cressida take the credit Mm -hmm. and Penelope is even more upset to see him looking at her in anger and in shame this makes me think of what Luke Newton recently said about Colin's reaction and what fans have 
have since worried and speculated might be quite extreme. As we discussed in a past Weekly Crumb, what we're most interested in is how Penelope interprets his reaction, a hint of which we see here. Yeah, so as we all know, Luke Newton did say that he was going to have the worst reaction out of everyone in the ton. Mm. And we've definitely thought about that together as understanding why that could be. Mm -hmm. And no one wants to see him kind of be like, I hate you, go die in a corner. Don't. But yeah. If he is going to have an extreme reaction, I think we hope that it isn't anger and rage because I just don't think that's conducive to anyone and it's not faithful to the character that we know. Even even here where Penelope is like, well, I don't recognise you. Yeah. It still has to be in line with his ethos as a character, which mm -hmm. ultimately is to not intentionally like lash out and hurt her in the same way that right. Eloise intended to lash out and hurt because she was so hurt herself. Like she had an extreme reaction. Mm -hmm. Another thing that has come up before, and again, we addressed it in the past weekly Chrome is, could this be the moment that Marina gets mentioned? Do you think she is going to get mentioned? Jess Brownell, the showrunner, has said that it isn't an issue for Colin anymore. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. we don't think the character is going to have that fixation anymore. But yeah. could it come up? Especially because Colin here is like, you, you've embarrassed me because I've been running around thinking that Eloise was whistled down which is a notion that's actually much more taken up by show Eloise she's embarrassed that she's been running around yeah. do you think this is the moment where he's going to be like you've changed the course of my life by intervening with Marina. It was you. This was like putting the pieces together actively in front of her. It would be interesting if he only brought up the Eloise situation and almost didn't even mention Marina at all because by this point mm. we know he's past Marina. Even yeah. if Lady Whistledown yeah. played a role in that the falling out of that relationship, he might be more interested in the falling out with Eloise because it's more relevant and that conflict yeah. is still going on. So that might be at the yeah. forefront of his mind as opposed to what happened with Marina as well. But Penelope could think that he's still there. Right. And perhaps Eloise addressing it last season would also indicate that mm. then Colin would also know the implications of her being it. But mm -mm. this part I'm the most nervous about because yeah. I don't want them to write too much out of character. For the sake of drama. Although it is Shondaland. Yeah, it is Shondaland. So I just, him having the worst reaction is so interesting to me. Do I think he'll have a fairly poor reaction? Yeah, and I think he'll do it out of emotion. I'm mm. wondering wondering though if it's going to be more like he feels that he was manipulated into liking Penelope and he doesn't know if his feelings are his own because of what she may write about herself what she has written about Marina in the past I'm wondering if he's going to feel manipulated in that way and question his own feelings towards her because of that I would hope that it wouldn't go that dark but I wonder if the notion of I have been so convinced that I I am in love with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now yeah. I don't even know who you are. Right. Yeah. Is going to be the initial reaction. And what he needs to do is sit back and unpick it. Mm -hmm. And what he will come to see is, no, this has always been there. It's always been there. You've always been there with this side of you. It's yeah. just, and I, and I found that attractive. I found connection with that side of you as well. I just haven't noticed it. Yeah. But yeah, in that initial reaction, that sort of gut instinct of who the hell are you right now yeah which is similarly what pen had at the end of 208 it mm -hmm. was who the hell are you yeah and she says it in 301 i didn't think you of all people was capable of this and that's kind of that core yeah tenant of, of both of their perspectives mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But one of the things he's most frustrated about here is that Penelope couldn't take the easy way out. She had the answer on a plate by letting Cressida take the fall. But why couldn't she let it go? I couldn't let her do it. I couldn't <laughs> let her be me. <laughs> Colin is less than thrilled with her explanation, noting that while Cressida might be the biggest bitch, <gasps> mon Dieu, she was willing to take the blame. Now that word blame is interesting because to Penelope, it isn't blame, it's credit which is a crucial difference. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. He's really making an ass out of you and me in this episode, in this <laughs> section of the book. Yeah. You were all for it earlier, babe. Yeah. So they have this very tense back and forth and every point he's making, she is holding her own against it. He's like, you're going to be in danger if people found out. It's just like, I've had 10 years of wondering what would happen to me. Mm -hmm. And he is like, you're going to be ruined. And he quite patronizingly is like, let me explain to you what it would be like if you were ruined and if people thought badly of you in the ton. And she's like, hang on, that's the life I've been living for years and years and years. People already think lowly of her. People already see past it. It wouldn't be that much of a difference for her. And what's really interesting about this moment in the scene is that she maintains that she's proud of her work. Yeah. And mm -hmm. she defends her work. Mm -hmm. And regardless of the fact that ultimately, like, this is like the love of her life sitting in front of her. Yeah. It would be so easy for her to, to acquiesce. But she stands her own and she's like, no. I am proud of my work. I'm not going to sway from that. Mm -hmm. She even calls him out. She's like, you run away from responsibility. You run away from everything. Mm -hmm. Here I am. 
it's almost like, like here I'm doing something and I'm proud of it. Yeah. And Colin is completely taken aback by how she speaks to him. And she says to him, There's more to me than you think, Colin. There's more to me than I used to think. <laughs> it's so, there's such a dramatic scene. And then her voice comes in, it's beautiful. I love it. And I wonder if this would have as much resonance here because she's already in 301 if that iciness is already going to take him back. Mm -hmm. So I think he's already will have been exposed to that icy side of her where she fights back and she's no longer enamoured with this perfect ideal of him. So she is able to stand up for herself more and more. But this is a moment where for her, it's almost everything builds for her here. The years and years and years of being made a mockery of, of being mm -hmm. bullied, of being thought less than, it all builds up and, and Colin ultimately is sort of the punching bag to take all of that emotion yeah. of yeah. that moment for her is all spills up because she's never had a chance to defend herself in this way and what she finds herself overwhelmed by is this moment that she she thinks he's so disappointed in her and ashamed of her work and this is a moment for Penelope where it's a shattering of the illusion that she's had and she says that this sadness she feels is the death of a dream her dream of him because his reaction is so extreme and it's so disappointing for her that she's like, you're not who I thought you were. Do you think we've already seen this? Though? Like this feels like a very 208 moment, right? Yeah, yeah, it does. But how do you think then this moment, this argument is going to go down in the show? Um, do you think that Colin's points and Penn's defense is going to be similar as the argument builds and builds and builds? I do feel like it will touch on some of the things she touches on here about her pride in her work and things that she didn't really get to say to Eloise mm -hmm. that maybe she couldn't mm -hmm. even think of in that moment about Lady Whistledown and why it is important to her. Yeah. Because in yeah. that confrontation, she didn't get an opportunity to say those things. So yeah. it may be Colin, she ends up saying those things too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in the show, she was running after Eloise yeah. when she overheard Colin. And we don't know, but it felt like in that moment, she was running to make amends. And maybe in that moment, she would have had that moment of acquiescence because she so desperately wanted Eloise's friendship. But at this point, she's already kind of lost everything in that respect. So she is in a more, in a stronger position to be like, you can have the worst reaction possible, but I'm still going to say my piece. And one of my favourite exchanges that they have is... You can destroy that paper, but you can't destroy me. <laughs> I'd like to. What did you say? Whistle down. I'd like to destroy Whistle down. You, I'm happy to leave as is. Stunning performances once again. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the moment where she finally snaps. She's had enough. So everything she's kept bottled up for years and years and years finally explodes out of her. And she says the line, No, you be quiet. It is my turn to speak. <laughs> <laughs> I I am proud of what I've done. I don't care what you say. I don't care what anyone says. No one can take that away from me. I, I so badly want Penelope to defend herself and her work like this. Mm. I wrote in my notes, not quite like that. <laughs> in, in the same vein. A similar sentiment, similar sentiment. <laughs> I have to say, <laughs> that line for me, now you be quiet, it's yeah, my yeah. turn to speak, would be so good for her to deliver. Mm -hmm. Nicola would yes. kill it too, yeah. And I feel like that is the perfect opportunity for her to say that. Mm -hmm. And it's at this moment where Penelope reflects that she might have not been able to stand up for herself in the past, mm -hmm. but Lady Whistledown always was able. And it's a real moment of pride for Penelope. And do you think that this needs to stand even at the risk of it driving Colin away? Do you think Penelope needs to be resolute here yeah. and be like, even if this turns you away from me, yeah. I'm not compromising? Yes. Yeah. You tell him, Pen. Which ultimately is a great moment for her. And when he decides to stick by her is great, but it then adds a complication that once they're together, facing everything mm -hmm. she still has this wild card side which we're gonna see later in the book mm -hmm. of i'm standing by this no matter what you know what yeah. this also adds to even without colin she would be fine even if mm -hmm. her and colin never got together she would be fine mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. i think that is so important to establish that's a really good point beans because we know going into this season her goal is to marry someone so she can have the independence to continue being Lady Whistledown yeah. Yeah. and even if she severs her relationship with Lord Debling by this point we know she wants to continue being Lady Whistledown yeah. so in this moment yeah. with Colin she's going to be like I am Lady Whistledown this is not something I am giving up right it's like I've lost you I've already lost you before and mm -hmm. I lived through it yeah. yeah and it's interesting because it's something that also resonates with book Penelope is she kind of goes I've accepted that I'm never going to be with you. And I think it's such an interesting difference in the way that they love each other. And it's just through the nature that they've fallen in love and the nature of what they've thought about love is that I think in both the show and the book, Penelope is a character who could 
live without Colin. Yeah. And I don't mean that she doesn't love him. I just mean that she has been so used to loving him at a distance. Resigned. Yeah. Yeah. She says in this scene, you know, she was born for him, Mm -hmm. but she's accepted that he wasn't born for her. Exactly. It also challenges Colin's idea of being a hero, always swooping Mm -hmm. in to help, Mm -hmm. always swooping in to be like, I'll save you. I'll be your savior. Because she doesn't want to be saved. Yes. She doesn't want to be saved. And it forces him to rather than feeling like as a way to represent his love or whatever, he needs to fix everything Mm -hmm. he needs to learn to trust as well and so it'll be a huge exercise for him to trust and it's a source of frustration because she is the wild card in terms of how colin loves penelope i think he can't be without her yeah once Mm -hmm. he's down yeah and that's a key difference is she could live without him Mm. still loving him Mm -hmm. but i think he can't live without her and he won't and that is such a different tension and you know she says it a few times during the book where he's like we're going to get married. And she's like, we're not married yet. Mm. And that's always like a slightly ominous note of, I think she always knows that she could endure. And and, and it's not even that, but it's like, she's always half expecting to have to mm. endure mm. by herself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's just how she's been. But, you know, speaking of a hero, Colin, he has a great idea here. Lucky, what's his idea? So his idea is to let Cressida get away with her scheme. She's the answer to your prayers, he says. And then her eyes snap up to his and she says, you don't know my prayers? Whoop. That is a killer moment. <laughs> great moment. No notes. Though I wonder if it would play out differently in the show just because the pollen that we do know know each other so much better. Mm-hmm. Though I suppose he might still not know about her feelings for him just yet. But mm. he does know that she dreams of escaping her mother and everything else she spoke about in the purposing about being brave and witty so that moment may play out differently i think in the show Mm -hmm. but she's sort of holding that card as to i'm still not letting you in fully because Mm -hmm. i'm still holding this one thing back but as we know colin is very preoccupied with the idea that if she's revealed as whistledown pen is going to be ruined but as pen points out cressida admitted that she was lady whistledown and Cressida wasn't ruined. Why is that, Colin? Because she's different, Colin says. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Do you know when someone says something, you like, take it back. <laughs> yeah. What a fuck up. Mm-hmm. Colin is sweating. Pen is like, oh, she's like, different. You know what it is? It's that moment in Friends where Rachel is like, how was she? Uh-huh. And Ross oh, is like, she was different. <laughs> and she's like, good different. <laughs> Beans, what's Pen's reaction? I thought you believed in me, that you saw beyond the ugly duckling. She ain't too happy. But suddenly, Colin has found himself very distracted by Penelope, and he just properly, properly looks at her, which I like. It's like, she's like really pissed off, and he just suddenly like just stares at her. (laughs) (laughs) And she's like, what the fuck are you doing? (laughs) And he realises that she is truly beautiful. Penelope pushes back at him because he suddenly starts being like, you're beautiful, you're beautiful. And she's like, don't even pull this shit right now. And he insists. I don't know how, I don't know when, but you are. (laughs) He chooses this moment to lean forward and kisses her in a desire to mark her as his. And here we go, the full-on, much-fabled carriage hookup. Take me to church! (laughs) This is like the duck version. Just imagine like a little quartet of ducks. Singing. (laughs) (laughs) We're hoping it's slightly more of a dramatic. (laughs) (laughs) That's not a duck. (laughs) Oh my god. Okay, right. Before we get into the hookup, yeah. What's gonna trigger this kiss? Because obviously it's a very explosive moment. Mm -hmm. But what I will say in the book is they almost have like a quiet pause after the argument. Like, they have this anger, anger, anger. And then mm. Penn gets so upset about Cressida that mm. Colin diffuses him and he's like, look, we'll talk about it later. Do you think that it's more cinematic if there's no pause and if they just burst into the passionate scene? Absolutely, yeah. And that's how a lot of people remember, I think. People always say yeah. that they're kind of angry yeah. when they make yeah. out. Do you think we're going to have this discussion about Penelope's beauty? I just, I hate the, the whole, like, you're so beautiful when you're angry yeah. shit. It's so gross and annoying. And then it also kind of, like, I feel like pushes this idea of... You know, the crazier a woman is, the hotter she is, when really it's just like, this guy's been pushing your buttons for so long, you're getting so fucking angry. (laughs) Anyway. 
Well, we know from episode two, I don't think it's going to take show Colin that long to realize that Penelope is attractive to him. And Mm -hmm, I have mm -hmm. a solution for this. I feel like instead of him commenting about her beauty here, it could be really interesting if she challenges him and even asks why he cares so much about the Lady Whistledown drama. Mm -hmm. And he kind of just like angrily retorts, because I care about you. Because I care about you. Ah! And (laughs) we realize he means it in the romantic sense as he sweeps her into a kiss. That's how I want it. Will Penelope realize that she means it romantically? Or do you think... I mean, she'll realize when his lips are on hers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, like, they're of an oblivious pair. Do you think that also that it's not coming, that the passion and the, like, the realization of, oh my God, I'm so enraptured by you. Yeah. For Colin, it's not necessarily coming from, like, you're hot when you're angry. Maybe. But it's what we've seen since, you know what, since episode one, I'd argue, but especially the infamous What a Barb scene, is that he's ultimately deeply attracted yeah. to Lady Whistledown. Mm. Yeah. And that that's what this is building up is that like, I'm so mad at you, but fucking hell, my gossip owner is raging at the realization (laughs) that this is who you are. Right. Yeah, I feel like this is the moment in the show where the sexual tension between them finally breaks. It's existed before this moment. There's not a realization here. It's just them kind of giving in. Mm -hmm. Speaking of giving in, they're busy hooking up all over the carriage. They're (laughs) writhing around. They're having a great old time of it. Does she have a titty pop out dress? Mm -hmm. She does. Yeah, titty pop out. Yeah, Veg, speaking of, how is she looking? We think she's looking fine. She grows gradually more disheveled as the carriage rise goes on. Mm -hmm. and gradually more undone so her dress is made of like a thin green fabric it's also mint green i think yeah which we have seen a lot of in previews so Mm -hmm. we could have seen the dress guys yeah (laughs) that's exciting unlikely but we could have seen it editor's note we now think that we actually might have seen the carriage dress we along with many other fans now suspect that enchanted pen might also be moonlighting quite literally as carriage pen as this is the dress she is wearing at the red ball when we think colin will follow her we all know enchanted pen very well by now but just imagine those sequins catching in the passing moonlight and sparkling inside that bumpy carriage journey exquisite also just to point out in the book this dress is mint green and the coloring of the enchanted pen dress has a very similar tone how cool is that and we know that she has a dress that has a bodice that's kind of easy to remove because mm-hmm. out slips the nip yeah hell yeah i love a sexy nip slip yeah. out of a titty pop out dress easy access but beans while she's busy you know popping out all over the place what's going through her mind never once did she think this is wrong she has been born for this man and she spent so many years trying to accept the fact he had been born for someone else to be proven wrong was the most exquisite pleasure imaginable and then she's like please sir may I have some more <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> In all their hot and heavy action, Penelope still manages to retain the brain capacity to think about how much she loves him. Oh, bless her. But she is convinced that this is a once in a lifetime situation. She's like, today's mine. I'll deal with tomorrow when it comes, but this is the only opportunity I'm ever going to have. And she's like, I'm going to make the most of it. I wonder if Chopin will view this scene in the same way where she's Mm -hmm. physically in it, but emotionally she's still holding herself in terms of this is a chance to hook up with the man she's always loved. Mm -hmm. But she's doing it with the knowledge that he will never truly be hers. Mm -hmm. Or maybe she'll be so caught up in the moment that she doesn't even think about that. I think it's like, that's the biggest thing that I'm thinking about as I'm doing the book reread is half the like actions in the book are just the result of them thinking things. Yeah. And sure, they can have conversations with, like, I'm sure Colin will have plenty of conversations with his siblings and Penn. I don't know who she'll speak to. Lady Danbury, I guess she could talk to about this to hook up. Mm-hmm. But it all goes on in their heads. So we've got to work mm. out like how that's going to translate to the screen. It is a very internal book. It's very mm, much, it especially Colin, very caught in yeah. his own thoughts, which... Very introspective. But yeah. I think that's probably why we've got characters like Jen. I think it's honestly why Penelope has a maid. And things like the lessons mm. sequence or whatever, where we need yeah. more like an actual space where they talk. Mm-hmm. But you know, they're not they're not talking right now, are they? So Pen is there <laughs> being like, you know what, might as well get it while I can. Meanwhile, Colin is busy picking out centerpiece flowers for the guest tables at their wedding whilst he's grinding into her. Choose your own bean venture. Ba-da-da-da. While Colin is busy kissing her, Penelope gets very distracted and begins giggling because his hair feels exactly like Eloise's and she would know as she's brushed it often throughout their friendship. That makes me feel ill. B, he's wearing the same color waistcoat Antony wore when he walked her home seven years ago after Colin broke her heart. C, his lips are the exact shade as an apple present in one of Benedict's paintings hanging in the National Portrait Gallery. Or D, his eyes are the same color as the peas that she saw Gregory toss at Hyacinth when she last had dinner with the Bridgertons. 
they're all in a way so unromantic i want to die <laughs> yeah yeah but which unromantic thought is it i'm gonna say his hair feels like eloise <laughs> ding 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 that's right i hated it well done beans you guessed correctly she's like oh it feels just like my bestie that is horrific yeah veg you were not a fan of this were you <laughs> no it feels like incest and i know it's not but it just does <laughs> it's definitely a weird weird thought to cross her mind that being said i absolutely mm-hmm. hope they include the playfulness of the banter that happens in the yeah. carriage scene not this particular exchange necessarily yeah. but he kind of tries to stop <laughs> to figure out why she's laughing i just don't know how any of us are going to survive that scene because he's kind of like <laughs> teasing her about why she's laughing and trying to yeah. get her mm-hmm. to admit what she's thinking to him but we could do without the reference to eloise keeps teasing her continuing like you say lucky that hot book playful tone what was it kindness is hot yeah. playfulness is hot yeah. before he lets out the line and i'm sorry veg as much as i love audiobook colin i really think it would be quite special if we got <laughs> beans to read out this line i think you're with me happy this is one step too far for me beans could you let us know what is going through colin's head what does he say to penelope in this carriage okay my god i want you he gasped <laughs> grinding his hips down oh i want to strip you bare <laughs> and <laughs> okay okay <clears throat> i want to strip you bare. <laughs> we've made this the unsexiest it possibly could have been <laughs> i mean it's better if you're listening with people around so you don't get all wet in your timbers <sighs> <sighs> I want to strip you bare and sink into you and never let you go. <laughs> oh my, my, someone's getting a bit carried away. Do you think we're going to get... Do you think this line is a step too far? No, it's hot. <laughs> no, it's fine. Yeah, we'll see. It's I hot. reckon Luke can pull it off. Yeah, I want to sink into you. Yeah, that's good. This is like my most voted up comment on the Bridgerton subreddit because someone was like I really don't know what line Colin is going to have that's going to like stand up to the other like I burn for you or like the bane of my existence and I was like well (laughs) there's this little gem yeah yeah and then they were just like that'll that'll do it (laughs) the back of my knees are sweaty (laughs) (laughs) you've romanced yourself my love yeah (laughs) and you know he gets more and more whipped up he gets very excited bless him that gossip boner is having the time of its life before dun 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 oh god what is it we've stopped well fuck or not i suppose (laughs) <laughs> as Penelope pulls back as Penelope pulls her bodice back up I just have to interrupt you here because one of my favorite mm-hmm. visuals from this scene is he hauls her bodice up because she can't yeah. quite get in a place so he like firmly hauls it up for her <laughs> he's like <"Rrr." laughs> it takes some adjusting do you know what I mean yeah like you have to like get in there and haul yeah as uh, Lecky said, Colin kindly steps in to do a little bit of heavy lifting in there. Mm-hmm. And the two realise they have little choice but to get out of the carriage, ravaged that they both well and truly are. And look, Colin vaguely tidies his messed up hair. He hops out the carriage and takes Penelope's hand in his. She's confused. He certainly is not. Because going to hang out with the Featheringtons, you know he loves it over there. Penelope's still dithering in the carriage, to which he can only say the infamous line. For God's sake, Penelope. Are you going to marry me or not? The girl hits the fucking floor. What the fuck? <laughs> Surely got low, low, low. Did you? <laughs> it, she's like, I have a print of your boot on my face right now. <laughs> yeah, she is slightly taken aback by his sudden declaration that they're going to marry. He's called Colin Chaotic Proposals Only Bridgerton for a reason. AO3 tags. You sing in your heart at this moment. But ultimately, Penelope ends up going along with it, and the two of them head into the house to announce their rather impromptu engagement. Woo-woo. Okay, a lot to discuss here. First of all, stunning performances all around. Well done, everybody. <laughs> but how are we feeling about this? I think this is such an interesting scene because I really do like how funny it is, the idea of them being like ravished and then being like, mm-hmm. well, fuck, we better go inside. Mm-hmm. But do you think this carriage scene is going to retain that sort of playfulness that ends with them being happily engaged, marching in, being like, whoop, whoop, whoop? Or do you think this could be a moment where the whole, and we've talked about it before in past episodes, where the scene gets turned on its head and Colin is in the same headspace where he's like, oh, we'll get married on a Thursday and we'll get this 
this bouquet and we'll get it. And he's like ordering the wedding cake in his head. And she's like, reality crashes in for Penn here. Yeah. Yeah. It's a moment where when they pause for her, it's the shattering of that moment for her. Yeah, I think so. And she's like, no, it all comes down on her, what they've done. Mm -hmm. And he's like, of course we're going to get married. Yeah. And do you think at that moment she's going to be like, absolutely fucking not. Do we think she's going to reject him? I know we've talked about this before, but in context of the book. I think she will. We definitely all hope so. Okay. So in the book, he doesn't confess his love until later. And I think Mm. he needs to confess Mm. his love and she needs to believe it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Because that was sort of the problem with, I think, season one. And we've sort of had that shtick of they get engaged and they haven't confessed Mm -hmm. their love yet. I think, I'm hoping that they won't do that again because I don't find that particularly romantic. I think they've got a lot of other issues. Once they're together, there's so many other things. There's so many external Mm -hmm. factors pressing down on them. So if we say that this takes place on a night, because one of the reasons that forces them out of the carriage is like, shit, someone's going to notice that you're here. We we kind of have to go in now. There's not really an option. Mm -hmm. If it's a night and if they roll up at her house, she could just get out of the carriage and bolt Mm -hmm. and be like, absolutely not done yeah and where he is just completely left reeling mm-hmm. and it'd be a fun way to turn that mm-hmm. on its head as well for book readers who are familiar with the story who yeah. for this scene it, it would shock them as well mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i think it's such a shondland move to have penelope who spent years of her life being in love with someone to reject him in that moment because ultimately she doesn't believe it yes and just to turn back to a little bit earlier in during the argument in the carriage scene here they had an exchange where she says to him you feel guilty. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I don't feel guilty. And she's like, everything you do, you do out of guilt that involves me at least. Mm -hmm. Ooh. And I think this is so resonant with the show and it has a different resonance in the show than it does in here because here she's like, you know, you dance with me, you're being nice to me. Mm -hmm. But I think in the show, it's even stronger there. And about his honour. About his honour, yeah. And that's the key part, whether it's his honour. He's coming at it from a place of love, but Mm -hmm. the way it's conveyed is like, we have to get married because obviously we have to get married. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she's like, absolutely no, what you're doing this out of guilt, you're doing this out of honour and I'm not being accountable for that stopping you from having a marriage of love. Yeah. And she bolts. Fortunately for book pollen, things are going a little smoother than it does in the show after all that rocking in the carriage has done. And the two march into the Featherington house. What an absolutely excellent time to show up at the Featheringtons because it's a Tuesday, which can only mean one thing, Lecky. It's the Featherington family meeting. Okay, so I don't <laughs> I don't have a strong opinion about how Portia finding out will go. I do think they could adapt the scene while swapping out Prudence for Felicity and how much funnier and heartbreaking would it be if Portia suspected Colin was there for Prudence who is already married at that point, we think. (laughs) Show Portia is so smart, though, that I wonder Mm -hmm. if this could believably play out in the same manner. Mm -hmm. And as we touched on in a recent episode, there may also be some confusion about the suitor rather than which sister is getting the proposal. But for me, what I love about this chapter, there's a quote that says, because Penelope's mother was not alone in the drawing room, every last Featherington, current and former, was there, along with assorted (laughs) spouses and even a cat. I absolutely (laughs) would love to see this Tuesday Day Featherington family meeting where Paul and kind of walk in and get a face full of the eccentric Featherington brood. <laughs> While rereading, I was thinking about how they could work this in. At first, I thought it maybe could be funny if Colin comes over to see Penn maybe for a lesson or out of a desperate need to see her as he thinks that she's slipping away from him. But then I thought it could be great after their engagement happens if we see Colin maybe stop by to see Penn and he walks in on a huge host of Featheringtons, not only the usual Tuesday crowd, but maybe some out of towners who have shown up for the wedding. All the redheads. Yeah. <laughs> Just a crowd of them. Mm-hmm. Like we've said, before there'll be a lot of drama in the latter half of the season so this could be another moment where they briefly break that tension but honestly I don't care where it would fall in the season I just think this would be just such a hilarious detail from the books to include Mm -hmm. and you know what a show lineup right (laughs) if he (laughs) walks in I mean exactly where he belongs wall to wall redheads (laughs) but you've got in the center you've got Portia Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Philippa Mm -hmm. cheese man out Mm -hmm, there mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then Prudank Yep. Come on, yep. Yep. come on. Yep. That's made for it, isn't it? Yeah. And like you say, Lecky, so here it follows the carriage and it follows their engagement and stuff. But as a scene, this whole humorous setup just kind of works regardless because they're eventually going to get engaged mm-hmm. at some point. Even if she rejects him in the carriage scene, like they're yeah. going to get engaged. And so you could have this moment of levity mm-hmm. when she does accept. So in they walk, Beans, to let you in on what happens here. Colin is like, I want to marry your daughter. And Portia's like, Great, let me go get her. Felicity, the younger daughter, Mm -hmm. who's basically like 
Hyacinth's best friend. They're the same age, same kind of energy. She's like, Mr. Bridget is here to whisk you away. And so this whole scene plays out where Colin increasingly gets angry because Portia increasingly is trying to push him onto Felicity. And Colin even says, as soon as I know we're on an incest note from earlier, Colin says that marrying Felicity would basically be like incest because it would be like marrying Hyacinth. And eventually, as the situation gets more and more ridiculous, Penelope tries to pacify Colin, but then Colin has this huge outburst where he's like, I want to marry Penelope. And Portia is completely taken aback that he would want to marry Penelope, which doesn't go down too well, does it, Lek? No, Colin has an outburst where he says, but do you know her? She's lovely and intelligent and has a fine sense of humor. Who wouldn't want to marry a woman like that? Aww. He's not doing too bad, you know, considering that he only decided about three seconds ago that he was going to marry her. Mm -hmm. (laughs) He's like fully on board with it. And this is like a very lovely defense and it's something that would fit with Portia. Do you think it's going to fall out this way that we're going to have Colin defending Penelope? Because I think it's almost needed after he yeah. he yeah, dragged yeah, yeah. her in front of other people mm-hmm. it could be with Portia it could be with other people in the ton where he defends her and would yeah. it be more powerful if it wasn't even when she was by his side it's just something that she overheard yeah Aww. and yeah. he was doing it without any awareness that she was there mm-hmm. and that would help her sort of believe it a little bit more because we said during our 208 Ooh. rewatch is one of the things that must be hard for Penn is when she overheard him dragging her it's like do you always see me like this? Do you always talk about me like this when I'm not here? So would this be a moment of healing where she hears him defend her? This might be something she overhears even earlier in the season because they need to Mm. work through that drama really quickly. And I feel Mm -hmm. like by Mm -hmm. this point, she might realize that he doesn't actually feel that negatively toward her. And then he thinks that- She doesn't feel that negatively. Well, you know what I mean? Well, he (laughs) says like he would never dream of- That's what you want with a partner, isn't it? Okay, (laughs) ladies. (laughs) I'm just saying that he doesn't think of her as somebody he would never court or marry she just at this point maybe thinks that they're not meant to be together and he's like listing the qualities as well yeah yeah so she may not believe that he has feelings for her but he realizes that he doesn't think of her as he did in 208 Mm -hmm. and fortunately Portia ultimately backs down and accepts that they're gonna get married they have a sweet moment beans you'll be all for this you know you like a little Portia moment where she hugs Penn and she says she does love her daughter Mm -hmm. and she thought they'd grow old together and that Penelope would look after her but ultimately she wants what's best for Penelope do you think we're going to get a very sweet Portia scene here? Depends on their arc until then we suspect that Portia and Penn will have an arc this season Mm -hmm. this could be kind of the culmination of that but it could also be like they've had it earlier and Portia knows what Mm -hmm. Colin said he's broke that he's broken a heart so she's almost defensive and that could be like the arc for Portia of like her being so protective I think it's not super likely but I would love to see that kind of thing it would be an interesting direction wouldn't it to be like yeah. You need to prove it to me as well, almost. Like, it's not just, I'm mm-hmm. just going to go along with this because he's Bridget. Or maybe Portia will have a quiet heart-to-heart with Penelope where she points yeah. out and says that, like, you know, you have this other suitor who is a lord and who mm. could provide for you and who may not break your heart like Colin could because mm-hmm. she knows that mm. by that point that Penelope has these actual feelings for Colin. Yeah. yeah. And when someone's in possession of your heart, they can ruin it, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Whereas Portia only has ever known that detached love in her marriage. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Editor's note, now that we have seen the trailer, it seems that Portia is going to have some sort of talk with Penelope about her feelings. We don't know the exact context of the clips in the trailer, but we wonder if Portia will actually try to push Penelope toward Deblaine before initially starting to realize that Penn's heart isn't really in it. What more could you want? Portia seems to ask at one point, hopefully paving the way not only for Portia to understand that Penelope needs to follow her heart, not her head, but also for Penelope to confront the truth of what she does actually want, whistle down her freedom and a life with Colin. But all is well, Colin is welcomed into the family and Penelope squeezes his hand and thinks about the adventure they're about to embark on. It's a couple of days later and Penelope is over at number five. It's been a busy few days since Penn and Colin announced their surprise engagement, but wedding planning is already underway with the big day only a month away, mark your calendars. Maybe just mark them in pencil because that schedule is subject to change. Mm-hmm. Eloise is taking the news of the engagement rather well considering. Meanwhile, Penelope is busy worried that Eloise might uncover the Lady Whistledown secret now that Colin knows. So naturally, this entire setup is very, very different in the show. How do you think she's going to react to the engagement, Eloise? 
Eloise here says that she was surprised and that had she known, she would have meddled, but she's happily surprised, you know, she's like getting her as a sister. It's a bit bittersweet, but ultimately she's on board. I feel like we've discussed this before, but I don't think Elle is going to react well. I think she will confront Colin and maybe mm-hmm, allude mm-hmm. to the fact that he's making a mistake and then be surprised when he reveals that he knows that Penelope is Lady Whistledown. Yeah. The two discuss Lady Whistledown's remarks that Lady Whistledown would retire if a Bridgerton ever married Penelope. I wonder if Chopin might make a similar remark as Lady Whistledown as we speculated in like episode two. Yeah, that it was such a preposterous notion. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Our broken Chopin Eloise hearts are soothed here by a very touching moment between their book counterparts who reflect on their friendship. Penelope is slightly preoccupied by the fact that Colin hasn't confessed his love for her, tiny little details, but she distracts herself by inquiring about the ink on Eloise's hands. Mm -hmm. Who on earth could she be writing to, I hear you ask? Plant daddy. Elle admits she's feeling a little out of sorts following the engagement. She feels like she's losing Penelope a little bit and she thought they would grow all together and now the world has shifted. But show fans, we don't need to worry about this. They've already well and truly lost each other. So we've already got that piece of admin out of the way. Although I do think it'd be interesting if at some point they had a discussion once they've healed where they reflect on their changing relationship yeah. as they move from friends to sisters. I feel like you lose something and you gain something in that transition. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But this touching moment is gently pushed aside as in walks the happiest fiancé in all the land, the lovely Colin Bridgerton, who immediately becomes distressed once he realises that the two girls have eaten all the biscuits. <laughs> Very in character. But don't worry, more food is on the way as the affianced couple happily catch up. They have a great little scene here where they talk about eloping. And I just want to say, I'm so sad that show Pauline can't elope. But because Colin was going to elope with Marina, yeah, yeah. you ruined that notion. Be too much like Marina, yeah. yeah. I can't do that. But on the plus side, Eloise makes a little joke where she says, I shall arrange for a ladder so that Colin might climb up to Penelope's room and steal her away. And then Penelope very quickly adds, there's a tree. Colin will have no difficulty <laughs> with it. And Pollen fans everywhere are thrust into a daydream where show Colin does just that. Please, thank you. No, it is a very high school musical. I don't care. And I want it. I want it on my I screen. Want I pay a Netflix subscription and and that's how I want it spent. <laughs> I, know, I want it to be really funny where like, he's like, of course I can do it. He's like, I'm Colin Bridgerton. I've climbed up mountains in Greece. And he comes up with a bunch of twigs in his hair, winded. And then he's like, <gasps> he's like wheezing. He like staggers over. Limps across the room to give her a kiss. <laughs> <laughs> oh. and the two have a very playful exchange where Penelope remarks you're not my husband yet and Colin turns to Eloise and says the kitten has claws <laughs> <laughs> and Ellen's like you didn't know this beforehand and Colin remarks taking about a sandwich obviously naturally of course I did I just didn't think she'd use them on me. Lecky, you love this, don't you? Yes, yes. Because then Colin looks at her with such a hot, masterful expression that Penelope's bones went straight to water. But this Ah. is one of my favorite little exchanges in the book because it's like playful, flirty, a little sexy, really great. Mm -hmm. And it's just hilarious that they do it in front of a Bridgerton sibling. And like, Mm -hmm. if this is in the show, it would have to be in front of somebody like Benedict instead of Eloise. Because first of all, there's the falling out with Eloise. But Benedict is maybe the only Bridgerton who would then leave them alone in a room together unchaperoned yeah yeah but you know Eloise would be there like Mm -hmm, six mm -hmm. feet apart it's like covid times don't come in with it like touching distance of each other Eloise takes this moment as her cue to leave as a shoddy chaperone and gives the two a moment of privacy thanks Eloise it takes about 0.3 seconds of the door being shut for Colin to pounce on pen Overall, Colin's still not entirely sure how he's managed to so thoroughly fall Penelope, but he's more than happy to lay on top of her in the drawing room (laughs) while he ponders the question. And Beans, this is genuinely what happens. He's like on it and he's like, oh, I love you. Hmm, Maybe. Who knows? Who knows? Mysteries of the universe. As Penelope is getting thoroughly compromised, (laughs) so is Violet Sofa. (laughs) Lucky. Ding, ding, ding. A sofa. Do you think that's something that could snap? This seems like the likely candidate for the piece of furniture they maybe break. I don't know. I have. I feel like a, a desk also has the potential, but I think it's going to be this sofa for sure. I could make a case for a bookshelf, I have mm-hmm, to tell mm-hmm, you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think Beans had that suggestion. That's a good one also. And Beans, you'll be delighted to know that they're absolutely having at the time of their little lives compromising each other mm. on this sofa. It's kind of still playful though, right? Like, Yeah, I was going to say that's one more reason why I think it could be this, this scene and the sofa because this entire conversation 
conversation they have is very, very playful. And when Nick and Newts gave that interview, they said when it broke, they kind of just collapsed into giggles and it was a very like pollen moment. And I feel mm-hmm. like that would be so perfect for this scene where they kind of have this playful flirtiness, they get carried away and then it's back to that playful flirtiness again. Also, when they're they're having their little flirty moment here, Colin is trying to direct Penelope about how to basically flirt with him by putting her hand on his shoulders, etc. And it just gives me lessons vibes. And I feel like this could be a, a way to revisit their earlier lessons in the show, but with a little more of a sexier tone to them. Mm. I am so down for it. And speaking of sexy tone, they're having a great old time on the sofa. Colin contemplates whether they should really commit to the bit and go the whole way right there on his mother's sofa. Beans, how do you feel about that? Is that the place for it? Sure. Go at it. Have a grand old time. Benedict loves a sofa. Yeah. Well, yeah, like for Benedict, he was like, by all means. Listen, I've had sex on a sofa. Yeah, I'm saying. No, I'm just saying <laughs> as a first time. As a first time. That's the context. I don't just mean in general. Listen, I'm sure it's a beautiful sofa. They have lovely bed-like sofas, so. Yeah, it's just long. Sometimes you like your boobs slapping on the edge of the couch. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. But, you know, he's busy thinking that and he's like, actually, let's save it for a bed. I'll treat you well. I'll give you the whole experience. But then he's struck by a thought. He's like, actually, whilst I'm just here lying on top of you, thrusting into a sofa, do I actually love you? (laughs) Now, I have to say, maybe. (laughs) You know, if we get to this point in the story where they're engaged. Yeah, no, thank you. And going out at a sofa. And if he's like, "Mm, do I love you? I think I'll scream into the abyss. (laughs) Just because... I have dealt recently with a man who does not understand his feelings and is terrified Mm -hmm. of them. It is so... Mm -hmm. Just stop it. Stop overthinking everything. Stop acting like it is... I'm sorry, I'm in a bad mood, but shut the fuck up. (laughs) I also feel like for Penelope to be comfortable enough to kind of have this playful moment on the show, she needs to know that he loves her. Yeah. So that that lighthearted tone comes from them being comfortable with each other and knowing how each other feel. Going into it as well, going into such an intimate moment, like knowing that she loves this person, like if this were me and I was very in love with this person and then come to find out that they're not sure how they feel about me, I would feel like I was being used at that point. Like he was just trying to like, almost mm-hmm. conquer me in a way and that's like not it's not fair for her i feel like this is a storyline that that does take over amongst mr bridgerton it's one of the elements yeah. is that colin it takes him a while to understand what it is he's feeling which is kind of fair because it's a slow burn for him he as we'll see yeah penelope has crept up on him so slowly but i feel like in the book it sort of works mm. kind of but in the show it's very different we've had pen being so badly damaged yeah you know, just mm. at such different points and it's it's a case where, like, maybe had that never happened, right. he would have been able to get away with this yeah. kind of behavior. Yeah. And she would have let him. But I just can't see Penn in the show standing for it. And right. I feel she has to be secure before she lets this happen. Exactly. For sure. Yes. And I just don't think that going it up to that point, I don't think Colin is as dense as he is. He's more sensitive in the, sh- mm-hmm. in the show, isn't he? Yeah, exactly. And he'll have had to do something that makes her break off the engagement with Debley. Right, exactly. So, like, I feel at this point, the point of copulation almost he would have to know that he's in love with her because the same thing happened yeah. with Anthony. Like they had relations outside of the marriage, but at that point he knew that he loved her and he knew mm-hmm. that he wanted to be with her. Like there was no yeah. doubt. Mm-hmm. And even the same for Daphne and Simon, like before that they officially had sex, there was a, it's always been you scene. And so they knew the love that was going into it. I just don't think it's fair and it feels icky, but I'm also in a bad mood. I'm so sorry, listeners. <laughs> (laughs) (laughs) and I just feel like yeah I feel like show Colin we're at a different trajectory we've had different issues I feel Mm -hmm. like he needs to kind of be down and not only down for it but like aware of it pretty early on they cannot be engaged in this being an issue right. but what i do like about this scene is that it does have the thesis statement about why colin hasn't been able to realize his love before which mm-hmm. i do think has resonance with the show and he thinks that he thought love would be a thunderbolt but penelope has crept up on him so slowly piece by love piece it. and yes. that's why he's struggling to piece it together and mm-hmm. i think that resonates very truthfully throughout the whole show mm-hmm. and i think maybe that's the discussion that he can be preoccupied yeah. by being like why haven't I been able to see her and I regret it and it's like it was piece by piece by piece for you Mm -hmm. and that's just as valid as any other kind of love at first sight in the end he decides his mom's sofa probably isn't the place to fully compromise her so he pulls himself off her reluctantly I just wanted you to know that 
I didn't want you to think I stopped because you didn't please me. This is a moment that reminds me of what Nick said after the Valentine's Day event and what Netflix even commented on during their rewatch that the intimate scenes have purpose in the show, they have meaning. And I feel like a line like this where a male lead would end an intimate scene but reassure his love interest that it wasn't because she displeased him would be such mm. a good character moment. And especially for Colin and for Penelope who really needs to hear that because he, he knows that her. she might feel insecure if he pulls himself away and that he mm -hmm. would want to make sure that she has no reason to be would be so great yes and i think this is one of the reasons why he needs to be certain of his love mm -hmm. quite mm -hmm. quickly because she cannot have him dithering because she'll bolt she, she will bolt yeah like he needs to be absolutely m like a monolith in how certain he is mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. i think she's still going to struggle with that but yeah. if he's there like oh is it oh i just think she'd be like obviously not yeah. i'm not going to do it so that's why i think but Lecky, this scene ends with a truly beloved line. In fact, it's Nicola's favourite line from the book. What do they say? Penelope asks if she looks a mess and Colin tells her that she's his mess. She says, but you're my mess. So it's like, yeah, you look a state, love, but you're my state. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely adorable. And I think we're going to get this because I think it's been hinted at. Mm -hmm. Sign us up. Wait, wait, I was going to say, I do think we're going to get this dialogue, but I don't think it's going to be in this scene. I think it might be later. Because I feel like they might put it at the end of a really dramatic scene to soften it a little bit. Because we've already had this very, I keep using the word playful, but they've had this very playful tone throughout the scene. And I feel like this dialogue is so iconic and it might be better served to soften a moment that's more dramatic mm. later in the show. Imagine it in Colin's soft voice. Don't. Chef's kiss. But absolutely frazzled by the idea that he might be in love with the woman he's thoroughly compromised and proposed to, God forbid, Colin spends an entire day doing his favourite activity, walking from neighbourhood to neighbourhood until he winds up outside Daphne's house. I'm telling you, the boy really does cover some miles in his book, you know, like his kilometre yeah. is racking up the numbers. <laughs> Butler Jeffries is quick to tell Colin he isn't expected, but Colin knows Daphne won't mind. Sure enough, she's quick to tell him she's arranged for food and she makes a quick quip about how her son David likes to compare Colin's stomach to thunder which even Colin gets a kick out of. But as we know from previous books, Daphne and Colin have a very close bond in the books and she very quickly realises that there's something wrong and she gets him to open up about what it is, to which Colin asks, how does one know if one's truly in love? Um, <laughs> Lucky, is, is uh, his little sister a ton of help here? No, Daphne is absolutely no help. She explains it's different for everyone. She just knew, but she does tell him that love doesn't always hit like a thunderbolt as it did with Benedict, as we just touched on in the last chapter. But she also says that the fact that he's asking must mean he's well on his way there. So not super helpful. You're maybe on that journey, Colin. Reassuring news. <laughs> yeah. He's somewhere along there. She ends a conversation by telling him to stop thinking so hard, oh God forbid, and just allow things to be. And after reiterating that, yeah, Daphne, you were no help at all, babe. Thanks mm -hmm. for trying. He not only accepts her offer of a carriage home, since it looks like it's going to rain, he manages to retain enough appetite to devour an entire plate of sandwiches. And Lucky, what else does he do? He takes another plate of sandwiches with him as he leaves. <laughs> and then we just get this hilarious description I just love of him in the carriage on the ride home. He's staring out at the rain, holding the plate of sandwiches. It's just this great little visual. And if there ever was a fitting visual summary of Colin's season, it is this. I <laughs> will happily take this as a poster, thank you. Moodily staring at the rain while holding a plate of sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> we discussed the Daphne thing a lot and we know she's not going to be in season three. I think we think it might be a Francesca scene mm. that they have something like this. Yeah. But I don't know. I think we need this scene to be a lot earlier in the season. Yeah. I think we can't be having this when they're engaged. It can be, and maybe if it's not necessarily like, could I love her? But just coming to terms with the journey that he's been on with loving her and, mm -hmm. and trying to navigate what he's going to do now that he's made his own, he's not made his own bed, he's dug his own fucking grave by trying to hook up with someone else. I feel like we've talked about this before, but if it is Fran, that makes sense because he's watched her fall in love during this season. Presumably, maybe mm -hmm. even her engagement with John happens very fast. Mm -hmm. So he just asks her how maybe she knew with John mm -hmm. and she could say that she just knew, but kind of give him that reassurance that he just needs to follow this course with Penelope and figure out his feelings. And he needs the impetus to actually do something about it once. Because I think it'd be better if he's like, if he comes to terms with it, but mm -hmm. then the struggle that he's having is, but what do I do now with it? Yeah. Since I've, I've ruined it so deeply. But does Colin love Penelope? Who knows? There's no time to dwell on it because we've got a party to get to. And what a great party it is. A pollen engagement celebration, no less. 
Veg, how is Pen looking? Absolutely beautiful, we assume. We do hear that her dress is ice blue. Mm, very nice. Which I did think was interesting because we've seen in like the Danbury Ball that Pen is almost, we think, summer and then Cresta is winter. But in this scene, Cresta is also described as wearing a dress that's sort of like an envious green colour. Just a little parallel there. But yeah, Pen's dress is described as ice blue, which made me very excited because it made me think of Italian pen. Mm -hmm. Could that be the engagement ball look? He is holding her hand in a very weird way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the hand Mm -hmm. thing. Good point. So there we go. I would be very happy with that being the engagement night. And it is the event of the season. But Penelope thinks it's mostly the event of the season because people are out there out of morbid curiosity over why someone like Colin Bridgerton would choose a nobody like Penelope Featherington. (laughs) Oh, pen babe. Let's get your self-esteem raised up a little bit. Um, I wonder if this will be a similar sentiment for the show. That curious news line from the journal has given as much pause for thought Mm -hmm. but then it's also like will pen be held in high regard by society at this point yeah so would it be this or would it be that the backdrop is the blackmail or the the bounty sort of putting the external pressure on but she's doing her best to not let it get to her and all that matters is they're engaged colin has been the perfect fiance it's about to change babe don't worry and she's truly happy he's by her side the entire night because he wants to be adorable guys just a quick answer quick question are you particularly attached to a pollen engagement ball no could this happen at any ball yeah this could happen anywhere yeah yeah Yeah. (laughs) as long as she's got a nice dress we don't care right Mm -hmm. cressida is also there and she is fuming that things are going well but colin specifically wanted her to be there because he wanted cressida to be forced to watch pen's triumph speaking of pen's triumph lady danbury arrives to congratulate her on her engagement lady danbury is clearly very thrilled for penelope and it's especially lovely when lady danbury then reminds penelope that there is no mystery as to why colin fell for her penelope was simply herself (laughs) and all is going just splendidly as anthony is about to make a speech to welcome penelope into the family before the engaged couple have a lovely waltz together it is set to be the most perfect little evening until attention attention lady whistle down final column read it now read the truth lucky in case our listeners are perplexed <laughs> what the hell is going on in burst in 10 paper boys throwing around sheaves of paper like large rectangles of confetti it turns out that penelope went and published her edition of whistle down anyway without telling colin she is mortified she'd intended for the edition to be delivered at a later ball not their engagement ball have to say i am obsessed by this visual mm-hmm. can you imagine right if they're like dancing and it's like this gorgeous 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 dance right and then the paper boys burst in and start throwing the whistle down around and the two of them just stand in the middle of the ballroom staring at each other and he's like you've gone behind my back and she's just staring at him and like imagine like the like whistle down confetti falling around them how cool would that be Mm -hmm. it is a good visual but does it make sense in this show for paper boys to crash like a society ball a society event i'm here for it You might not be here for it, but who else isn't here for it? (laughs) Colin. He is instantly and incredibly angry at the sight of the whistle down paper as his temper flares and he struggles to keep it under control. And there's a moment here which everyone who's read the book dislikes where Colin grabs Penelope's arm as a way to control himself, even though he knows it hurts her. But we have full faith that this moment will not make it into the show in any capacity. Our show, Colin, is extremely considerate. It would never physically manhandle Penelope. Thank you. Colin picks the whistle down from the floor and reads the same words he intercepted back at the church. The boring in a frenzy and Anthony tries to coolly play off the moment in his toast the couple and unfortunately yeah we do have another grim moment here of Colin manhandling Penn where he forces her to drink champagne again this ain't happening in the show don't worry but he is furious with her Lucky what's upsetting him most about the situation Colin feels betrayed because they were a team now and she had acted without him. It's his job now to protect her and she's made it a lot harder for him. I wonder if this will upset show Colin, who will also really believe that he and Penelope are a team, pull in against the world as we always describe them. But as a character, Penelope is so used to having to look out for herself and to protect others through Whistledown that it's not hard to see how a moment like this could unfold in the show. Colin makes an excuse for the two of them to leave as soon as possible. He's ready to uh, colourfully talk this one out. Mm -hmm. The pair have their wall which is now morbidly tainted by Colin's anger at Penelope's betrayal and they're both struck by the realisation this was supposed to be a happy a happy night but it's all been ruined at Wistan's hand and by Colin's reaction let's not lie mm-hmm. but where are they off to? Colin leads Penelope up through the halls to his childhood bedroom through like a stairwell that the I believe the servants use but I wonder if his bedroom is as yellow as his show bedroom is but they enter mm-hmm. the 
pitch dark room so she can't see the yellow walls or lack thereof. <laughs> and they stand there in unnerving silence. Penelope requests that he light a candle multiple times with Colin darkly enjoying her discomfort again, not endorsed by What a Barbara Paul and Podcast before he eventually gives in to her. And the two have an argument again where Colin confronts her about publishing. Penelope remains very indignant that she never went behind his back because they never agreed that she wouldn't publish it. Mm-hmm. It's something that he simply decided by himself. And she hoped that he would forgive her. She's like, I knew that you'd be pissed off, but I hope that you'd see past it at this point. Mm-hmm. And he quite callously throws back their engagement. It's like, well, you knew that I wouldn't back out on the engagement with you. Mm-hmm. And Penelope kind of is a bit more resigned in this. She's flaring up at him, but she's distances herself a little bit. And she's like, it's my fault. I've spent years putting you on a pedestal. I've spent years thinking you were nice. And, you know, when you're not nice... I'm always surprised, but I just thought that you were incapable of being anything but nice, which definitely has resonance to 301. And I think that hits Colin when she's like calling him out and being like, I've been wrong about you. And they continue to argue and Penelope continues to think that the core of Colin's overreaction is that he's ashamed of her. He insists that he isn't and reiterates his concern that people are going to be after her and that that's one of his primary concerns about her safety. He also has this moment where he panics at the idea of having to live without her if anything does happen to her. I feel like this is a very show Colin argument where he's like, you're in danger, I can't be without you, I need to protect you. But in the end, Penelope decides that their arguing isn't getting them anywhere and so decides to walk away from him and the situation. And it's at this exact moment that Colin realises two things. Like, what two things does he realize? One, he's jealous of her. Two, he's in love with her. Excellent. How do you feel about that, Beans? It's a little combination. Incredible. <laughs> Doesn't just fill you with pollen joy. Mm-hmm. You're not feeling this section, are you, no. love? Literally, I have no idea why I liked Colin in this section of the book. Yeah, he is a bit of a dick. Your feelings at the beginning <laughs> of the episode have now changed once more. I just, oh, <laughs> good gravy. Just like, oh, all of this bullshit he's very angry all of this bullshit come on yeah you tell him but yeah so you know he picks his moments you can't deny of him i feel like after they become engaged i want them to be a team like we just discussed and like how colin wants so i wonder if this is something that could happen before they are engaged like in episode five this is something that penelope does that worries colin even further and makes him more determined to kind of take her under his protection um in addition to worrying about her i wouldn't be surprised if she pulled something like this when they Mm. were engaged Maybe. I just feel like it's just something she would do. I feel like this could be like a proper episode six drama because what strikes me so much is I think he so firmly believes that they're a team. It, the foundation of their love for him is is built on that. It's us against everything. Once we're in it, we're in it. And the fact that she is a wild card, I just think if she thinks that he's at risk, she would go behind his back. I think it's important for Colin to realize that even Colin and Penelope really... Penelope needs to realize that they do need to work together as a team. Colin needs to realize that the fact that just because they are a team doesn't mean that they aren't also two individual people. Yeah. And so I think that's going to be a struggle for both of them. Her leaning on somebody else and allowing them Mm -hmm. to have that trust and him allowing himself to trust that they both can work together. And that he doesn't have to be the hero of every moment. Yeah, and that he can work with her rather than working, not against her, but, you know, working over whatever she's doing, speaking over her, like making decisions for her. So, yeah, I think that's something they both need to work on. I have two thoughts about this. One is that I feel like if this is something that happens in episode six, I think that the big drama would be maybe the... Cressida confronting Penelope about knowing her alter ego. Yeah. And if there is a moment where Penelope acts of her own accord and doesn't kind of clue in Colin about something that she's going to do, I wonder if that might be something that happens in episode eight when she goes to confront the queen on her own or something Mm -hmm. like that. Well, that could be the moment, right? Mm -hmm, That could mm -hmm. be the moment. Like we will have already touched on this in one Mm -hmm. of our um, block four episodes is that it could be the final time where she goes behind his back to go see the queen, Mm -hmm. which would be such a delicious bit of tension. Mm -hmm. But this for Colin is also the moment of realization where his love hadn't been a thunderbolt from the sky. It started with a smile, a word, a teasing glance. Every second he had spent in her presence, it had grown until he reached this moment and suddenly he knew. And I do think that that is- Epitome of pollen. His love summed Mm -hmm. up. But can we just have this much earlier? Thank you very much. Yeah. And so with her hand on the doorknob, he strides towards her, certain in the knowledge that he cannot bear to let her go. He is in love with her and he is aware of that fact. A fucking miracle because (laughs) it has 
fucking taken his time to get there, no matter what medium, whether they're paper or fucking pixels on a screen. He's finally there. He's furious, but he adores her and he needs to show her right here, right now. Luckily for Penn, there's a bed on hand. (laughs) So he takes her hand and leads her to the bed, whispering, stay, 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 because this was Penelope and this was love. And there we go, kids. We made it. Next episode, we'll pick right back up on the engagement night. They're going to have a great old time. You're going to have a great old time. But for now, there we go. God, Veg and Beans, you went through the ringer there. (laughs) Veg, you went on an emotional journey. Mm -hmm. Beans, Mm -hmm. I think you were an emotional journey. (laughs) Yeah. It has increasingly gotten darker because it's about to rain over here. So I feel like the weather has matched my (laughs) attitude. And I'm so (laughs) sorry. (laughs) It's a very rainy book anyway. Lucky. I was going to say, this is maybe one of my favorite sections of the book, and there's a lot of moments that I would like to be yeah. adapted into the show. The my mess. The playful banter we see between them. The my mess moment. So many good pollen moments here. And even where it doesn't necessarily work for their show counterparts, you can see how they can twist it and adapt it, right? Mm-hmm. Any particular moment, little nugget that you desperately want to see actually brought over to the show? You like the kitten has claws and you're my mess. Love that one. Yeah, I do. Mm-hmm. Veg, what are you thinking? I love Lady Danbury's line which I think we mentioned earlier, all these fools trying to figure out what you did to get him to marry you when all you really did was be yourself. Yeah, that's a good one. That That is a gorgeous moment. I'm going to have to go for her in the carriage when she says, you be quiet, it's my turn to speak. Mm -hmm. Good Mm -hmm. one. That's such the heart of her character and it's such the heart Mm -hmm. of her journey where she has spoken on paper, but actually using her physical voice Mm -hmm. would be a really Mm -hmm. cool moment. Beans? I mean, titty pop out dress is fun. We can do that. <laughs> oh, I love it. Titty pop out dress. I love it. Well, kids, there we go. So join us for our next episode. Have a look at our schedule. Catch up with us because our last installment is coming very, very soon. In the meantime, where can everyone find us, Lecky? You can find us at Pod on Instagram and TikTok. And if you're listening to this on Spotify or another one of your favourite podcast platforms, we're also on YouTube with some wonderful, beautiful collages. And if you're watching us on YouTube with the wonderful, beautiful collages, but you're thinking, hey, this would be so much better, eyes free, then great. <laughs> Go and listen to us on your favourite podcast platform. And Beans, she fancy singing us out? I have a special call-in song. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. Go for it. I'm yeah. excited to hear it. And I can't fight this feeling anymore. Pen's the one that I'm fighting for. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's the violin. Do 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 do. Do 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 do